All right, I'm very excited about this. That I don't normally get nervous for stuff like this, but uh, this is a real exciting one today because we are here with the get this two time winner of Survivor, the winner of Survivor, winners at war. Here he is, Tony Vlachos. Ding ding ding! What up, Rock and Rob? How are you, man? How are you doing, Tony? Good, good, man. No complaints. Just. So nice to see you. Uh, so excited. Tony is wearing a Mish shirt uh, in honor of the great Michelle Fitzgerald. And he also has a Team, <laughs> team Nick <laughs> shirt. Yes, you have a whole closet full of different t shirts. I have here on, I am wearing the Jonathan Penner season 40 uh, w- shirt, which you rejoined Twitter to help launch. That's that's correct. And I got, signed I got, by Tony, Michelle, and Natalie. That's correct. And I have a few of them of my own. They're in the wash right now. And I thought I was going to dry them in time for this interview, and I didn't get a chance to. So yes. I'll wear that the next time. Well, Tony, that was a great thing that you did with working with uh, the, uh, to working with Yule and to help support uh, the Penners, uh, Jonathan and Stacy, and uh, the help uh, fund uh, research for. ALS. Uh, that was really incredible that you came in and uh, got on board with that. Yeah, you know that, Rob. That's the least I can do. I know Yule was out there. He was, you know, he was going through a hard times because of it. And you know, I, he he felt like he was like Tony. You know, after the game, he was like Tony. You did such a great job. You played such a great game. Maybe you'll have a better platform than I will. Maybe you can help me promote this. And I was like, absolutely, because uh, Sarah and I we were talking about the cops or us T-shirts. And then Sarah was like, hey, Tony, talk to your artist. See if you can draw something with the whole cast. So Sarah's idea, too, to do this stuff. And uh, so we made it happen, you know, and here we are. And being that, the, the you know, I, t- I talked to Penner and I said, Penner, I have a local guy that I deal with and I know I grew up with this person that does the print shop. If you want, talk with him. He'll be fully transparent with you. You run the whole system behind the scenes so you see what orders are coming in, what orders are going out. You can talk with him, leave me out of it. And they did that on their own. So, yeah, well, that was really, that was really incredible and uh, very, uh, very generous of you to get involved uh, with that. All right, Tony, we we have so much to dive into from, uh, from this season. And uh, I I just, you know, the thing that really just uh, jumped out to me in terms of your return to Survivor this season, did you, did you feel like that the, the game changers experience really, really ultimately like uh, changed you as a survivor player to come back and have this great victory in season 40? I mean, I, I, I guess, I guess everything, you know, everything put together is makes you the player you are. Right. So adaptability is one thing, but game changes, you know, when they call you up and they say, you're interested in playing again, me, I just say, yes, I don't fish for information. I just say, yes, just tell me when and where, you know? Um, so when I went there and I seen who I was playing against, and there was only two other winners. I was like, come on, man. You know, like you, you threw three of us into a lion's den. Was gonna, they're going to kill us. They're going to tear us apart. So in my mind, I already knew I didn't have a chance. So I went into the game and I had all these fantasies that I wanted to fulfill out there before I got voted off. So that's why I went into the game like right away, just started doing my crazy nonsense. But again, you know, I know what it was like to lose. You know, they, they snuffed my torch. I know what that was like. And, and so when I went into the new one, the new season, I knew it now was all winners. I said, okay, now I have a chance. So let me play properly. Let me just, you know, take what I learned from my first time, take what I learned from my second time, which was not much. I just knew how to get snuffed. And it, does, it doesn't hurt as much as I thought it did. You know, when I used to blindside people, I was like, oh, man, this is going to kill them. It's going to haunt them for life. But when I got snuffed, that's it. The game is over. You outplayed me. You outwitted me. It's over. No problem. Let's move on with life. So that's why I was like, you know what? It didn't, it didn't hurt that bad. So, you know, I took that with me. And I was like, you know, wherever I blindside and win as a war, I'm not going to take it that personal because it doesn't hurt that much. It's a game. Yeah. When you got the call for Winners at War, was there any hesitation on your part to go back and go through this again? Actually, I was in the middle of building my house. So I was in the middle of construction. So at first I said, you know what? I I don't think this is the right time for me. I said, I don't think I can do it. You know, they didn't tell me that it was all winners either. So I was in my back of my mind. I'm not going back out there to stay out there for 50 days to be voted out and then going on an island hopping in Vietnam somewhere like I did last time. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I, so I was like, Maybe, maybe call me in another week. Let me talk it over with my wife. So then they called again and I was like, you know what? Right now, I don't think it's the time. And then they called back and they said, okay, we sweetened the pot. You know, we're going to give everybody across the board X amount of dollars. 
And I was like, you know what? Maybe it's worth it. Maybe I'll go out there and get some pool money so I could put a pool in my house. So that's why I was talking to my wife. And I said, you know what? If I go out there, even if I last two, three days, maybe I'll get enough money with the X amount of dollars they're giving us, I could put a pool in my house. And that's why I said, let's do it. So I left my wife in the middle of construction, you know, with a bunch of things to do and contractors to call to try to get it going. And I left her and I flew out there and that was it, man. Did you have in your mind you say that in the first episode, you're very much like uh, talking about how that you can't be running around, you can't be doing the stuff you do in, in Game Changers. Was that sort of like from the time that you left to go out there that you sort of like knew that you had to play a much more under the radar game to start off? It, it, you know, abs- absolutely. I mean, you know, like my wife and I, we talked about it like, Tony, you're going to go out there, you're going to be the first voted off. You know, and then I was like, you know, babe, I'm, you know, if I am, they gave, they're giving us X amount of dollars. And then she's like, if you go out there, try to make it worth your while, you know, just be quiet, just listen more than you talk, you know, try to try not to be an idiot, you know, pretty much don't go out there. And, you know, I try to explain to her, I said, listen, I was an idiot because I knew I had no shot. So let me just go out there and, and game changers. I knew I had no shot. So let me just go out there and just do, just do nonsense. Just play around like an idiot, you know? And that's what I did. <laughs> so this time around, I'm like, you know what, let me make it worth my while, especially that they're all winners. So I knew there was plenty of people I can hide behind. I knew I had to be quiet. You know, Baby Cakes also told me, Tony, just be quiet. So I had to play a game that I, I, I don't like to play. I don't like watching myself play that kind of game, but I had to. Yeah, it was uh, really incredible to watch you in the very early going, just sort of like be uh, talking about, uh, you talked about how like you felt like that you were on house arrest. It's not that different from uh, what it was like to be uh, during se- uh, sequester and uh, li- living at your house. You can't go anywhere. You have to sit there around the shelter. Yeah, no, it was, it was tough. And I thankfully I had my boy Wendell. Wendell was like, Tony, you're doing a good job. Just keep it up. Nobody's even looking at you. Nobody's even talking about you. Just stay right here with me. Let's build this shelter. And we were building things together. You know, he was showing me how to build things, which later on I wound up be building a ladder because of watching Wendell build things, you know. But he, he was very impressed. And, and being that he pointed that out to me, I was like, oh, wow, this is really working. And so that's what I did. It was very hard for me. But the only way I can do that, Rob, honestly, is I, I, I got... I was up all night again. I did the same exact way I played in Cagayan. I did it this time again. Every single night, I would just go to the beach because during the day, you can't, you can't think of things outside of what you're talking with about with people with. You know, when I'm talking with people while I'm playing the game, I can't be thinking about what to do A and what to do with B and what to do with C. You can't think strategy. So I used to go out at night all the time, whether I was building things or making my bunkers or looking for idols, I would go out at night and I would just think because that's the only time you get to think about the game in advance, because when you're playing the game in the middle of the day with people, you're building fires, you're carrying wood, you're talking strategy with other people, but you're not thinking for yourself what you need to do. So that's why at night it helped me. It was like, Tony, you got to stay quiet. Keep staying quiet. Keep staying quiet. Keep staying quiet. Let everybody else go. I don't care that Kim is searching for an idol. I don't care that Amber went out looking for an idol. I don't care that everybody's looking for an idol except me. I don't care because it's not going to do nothing for me if they vote me out. So that's why I just consciously repeated to myself, don't go out, don't go out. It was hard, man. Really hard. In the beginning of the game, were you going out at nighttime like you were doing later on in the game? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, you didn't see another, every, every single night, you know, producers, I think you should just text, send a tweet or a text message to the producers and ask them, was Tony out at night? I was building fires throughout the jungle since day one. I would build the, see, because at nighttime, I would be the, the, the fire tender. I would just tend to the fire. I would just keep, you know, and I would be making my own kits, my fire kits. I would steal some of the kindlings that we gathered all day. I would steal some of the husk and I would put it in a basket and I would take that basket. And when everybody's sleeping, I would run so fast down the beach, climb into the woods and build my own fires, you know? And then I would run back to camp, like maybe once every two hours, I would run back to camp and I would stoke the fire. I would put more wood in there. I would purposely bump into people, step on them by accident. They would look at me and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just tending the fire. So just in case they wake up later, they know that I'm tending the fire. So I'm probably just getting some wood to, you know. So I was just doing crazy things right from the beginning. But I did it at night. Tony, I, I feel like this stuff about you is really legendary in terms of just how uh, much energy you have. Uh, there was a great secret scene later on about how you felt like that you were a succubus. You were taking all the energy from the other players. But when, when did you actually sleep in the game? Rob, man, maybe, I, I, I don't know. I guess, I guess when I seen the sun starting to come out, because I would hide when I seen the boats coming in for the new, you know, you had yeah. three crews. And when the new shift came out, I would hide. And as they walk and I jump out and scare them, one dropped the camera and started yelling at me, don't do that shit. You know, like they were, they were going crazy. But I would, when I see the sun come out, that's when I knew people would start waking up. 
And then I would go there and I lay and I would lay down. And when they woke up, I was like snoring because I was exhausted by that point. You know, like mm-hmm. the nights were real quick. You know, everybody was saying, oh, the, the, the nights are long. But for me, they were quick because I was working. I was doing things. And before you know it, the sun was coming out and I had to go back to the shelter. Yeah. Tony, was there anybody that you uh, wanted to have on your initial tribe that wasn't there that you said you were you were happy? You had Sarah, you had Sandra, you guys that's were it. red, were that's red it. hot. Yeah, that's it. Those are the only two people that I talked to. Be- you know, those are the only two people I know uh, in the survivor family. Sandra, because I spent a lot of time with her in Vietnam and we used to talk and say, why the heck did we go after each other? We were the only two winners with JT three winners in all and game changer. We should have stuck together. And she was like, yeah, Tony, you're right. If we ever play again, those are the famous words, right? If we ever play again, let's stick together. So me and Sandra had a good, you know, we had a good bond together outside the game. Sarah, the same with Sarah, Sarah, if we ever play, let's stick together. And when I saw those two on my team, first I said, this is great. But then I started thinking, I was like, Oh my God, people are going to break us up right away. You know? So that's when I was saying to myself, there's no way I can talk with these girls and let people see me that I'm close with them. So Sarah initially came up to me and she's like, Hey, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah. So you're going to be honest with me. I said, yeah. She says, are you a cop? And she was trying to reenact that same yeah. thing that we did. In, and I was like, Oh snap, Sarah, please get away from me. You know? And then Sarah came up to me. She's like, Tony, I think you're right. We need to like make believe we don't like each other or stay away from each other. Sandra is over there talking to me. Hey, Tony's at water under the bridge water. And I'm like, Oh man, please let's not talk to each other. Cause at that point I knew everybody was looking at everything, you know? So, but those were the two, I was the happiest to see them later on to find out Sandra was trying to get rid of me, which was heartbreaking. But initially mm-hmm. I was so happy to see them both there, you know, and right, my so, put down. Yeah. You end up in, with this initial group, uh, Dakal, did you have somebody in your mind that you wanted to go after right away? No, absolutely not. No, it was not like that. Whatever the majority wanted to do, I was just going to go with it. You know, unless it was Sandra or Sarah, then I would have fought for them. But uh, as soon as we got there, me and Wendell hit it off really good. Me and Nick hit it off really good. So as a matter of fact, it was me, it was Sarah, it was Sandra, Wendell, and Nick. We called ourselves the system. You know, we, we made our own alliance. The system, yeah, because me and Sarah are cops. Sandra is a paralegal. Well, Wendell and Nick are lawyers. So we like, it's a system. And then later on, when Sandra tried to get me out, we were, I went to them and said, guys, the system is corrupt. It's done. Sandra just tried to get rid of me. And, and they were like, oh, my God. And that's when the system started falling apart. And then, you know, we merged. I mean, we separated with the swap. But you, we, we were good, man. And then Yule and I were sitting at the beach talking. Tyson and I, we were calling each, el- each other uh, the dynamic duo or TNT, dynamite, you know? Yeah. So I was forming bonds with everybody, you know? Me and Amber were out on the beach. We were, she was telling me about how, how brilliant her kids are. And, and they know how to read the stars and astrology and all that stuff. And I'm like, wow. And she was great, too. And then... When they wanted to get rid of her, I was like, oh, come on. Why are you going to get rid of Amber, you know? Like, I didn't want them to get rid of Amber, but I had to go with the flow, man. In the beginning, I had to. I went yeah. to you. Hmm? Yeah, in, in that uh, second hour of the first episode, that there's some talk about that uh, Tyson's name is, uh, is that allegedly he's, ta- he's talking about you. You're talking about maybe uh, getting rid of Tyson before it ultimately lands on Amber. Yeah, so, so I, I came up with some plan. And I went up to Yule and Yule happened to be with Sophie. And I was like, oh man, these two are tight. Cause they would just, you know, bounce ideas off each other right in front of us. I used to see them, you know, and I was like, oh man, they're tight. So I would go to them because you could tell like they were the ones that were just thinking about everything. And I say, guys, let's, let's just, let's just act like we're going to get rid of Amber just in case, because me and Nick found Kim looking in a ditch for the idol. Yes. So we thought that Kim had the idol, which she did. And you know, she was looking at us with her eyes like a deer in her light. Right. So we were scared that Kim might have the idol. So we were passing that idea around that she might have the idol. So we were going to pretend that the votes were going to go to Amber, but we should get rid of Tyson. But they didn't like that idea because I guess it came from me. And, you know, they didn't want somebody like me to take control that early in the game. So then they came back and they were like, let's get rid of Amber because she's with Rob. And I was like, that, that doesn't make any sense. She's not threatening anybody. Tyson's out here. He was trying to start trouble with, with everybody. He was throwing Sandra's name out there. He threw my name out there. He was saying that Sophie was talking about Sandra. So he was just throwing... He was just making all kinds of crazy things out there. I don't know why he was doing that. But then we were trying to target Tyson. And then when I told Ewell, let's get rid of Tyson, Ewell goes back and tells Tyson. He tells Tyson that I was talking about getting rid of him. Mm -hmm. So then I found that out because Tyson told somebody that Ewell told him that. So then I go to Ewell and I pretended that I was, that I trusted Ewell, you know, at that point. I was like, hey, Ewell, listen, this is what Tyson's doing. Tyson's lying. 
he's telling me that you told him I want him out, but I know you didn't tell him. So at that point, you know, I wanted him to know that I'm working with him and I'm not coming after him just in case he got back to him that I found out that he threw my, that Ewell threw my name to Tyson, you know? So I tried to pretend to Ewell that I wouldn't, I wasn't believing that. And it still didn't work. Ewell still wanted uh, what Ewell and Sophie wanted. That's what we had to do. They wanted Amber gone. So we went along with it. Did they you not out. trust Ewell at that point in the game? No, I, I did trust Ewell until I heard that he told Tyson that the plan yeah. was, that I was planning on getting Tyson out. So at that point, I didn't really trust him. But then me and you had great conversations out on the beach together, one-on-one. And you was telling me, Tony, I need you to help me get a restraining order against Tyson. I said, what are you talking about? He's like, Tyson is following my every step. And I'm like, oh, man. So, yeah, sure enough, wherever you went, Tyson went to try. Because, again, we knew early on that you and Sophie had the power. You know, they for some reason, it was just like everybody was gravitating to them to ask them what we should do. And, and Tyson was one of them. So Tyson wanted to get into that power couple, you know. And that's mm-hmm. why he would follow you all everywhere. And to the point where you was getting annoyed with it. He was like, I can't do nothing without Tyson being right there with me. So that's when I said, you know what? And then you told me, he said, Tony, you're right. We should have got rid of Tyson. But then the next time me and Tyson formed a stronger bond and I didn't want to get rid of Tyson no more. Right. So I was trying to save Tyson. It was just crazy. Yeah. Man. Can you talk that through? Because uh, in the episode that we got to see, it looks like you and Tyson have a conversation. You guys are talking about how, like, if we would have gone after each other, that would have been bad for both of us. And then you say, it's a, it's really the first time that you're talking about the the big threats versus uh, what we would later come to know as lions versus the hyenas. You go to, you talk to Sarah, you talk to Kim, they're all on board, but it ultimately doesn't come to the, together. Was that an issue that Sandra wasn't going to vote uh, w- to save Tyson? Yes, it was Sandra because Tyson threw her name out there. And you know, Sandra, how she gets when somebody throws her name out there. Yeah. I mean, that's the right thing to do. When somebody's gunning for you, you got to get rid of them as fast as you can. But that wasn't the point. You know, that at that time of the game, it was like, you know what, let's just stay strong. And again, this big threat and smaller threat or lines and hyenas, it's all based on perception before we got into this game. You know what I mean? That's what the outside, the survivor community and people say, who are the bigger threats. You would never think Sophie was a big threat because of the way people talk, the community talk, that Sophie wasn't a big threat. She was a quiet player. So that's why Sophie was on a lower, you know, on a lower radar. But she yeah. was killing the game. You saw that. Next time Sophie plays, she's going to be a lion for sure because that's <laughs> the perception of her this time going into the game next time. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Uh, Tony, at- this early part in Decal, uh, we saw you build your ladder. We saw you uh, with the shark. Do you have any other wild stories from your time on the Decal tribe that we didn't see in the show? Man, I can't remember. Uh, I mean, there was just little things that me and Wendell were doing. You know, uh, we were playing with toys. He was building toys and stuff to just make the time go by and whatever. And you know, again, with the games that everybody built, I would play the games and I would purposely lose. It was like all psychological for me at, in, this, in this season. I just wanted everybody mm-hmm. to think that I'm dumb, I'm weak, I'm not a strategic. You know, I had to do that. So, you know, just by talk, talking to people in a, in, a, in a different way, like, okay, 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 acting paranoid like I was in, in, in Cagayan. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, Tony's a paranoid player. But that's, that's my game. That's how I do it because, and you've seen a scene when I almost got caught in my spy bunker, you've seen I was acting paranoid. Oh, my God, they're going to get me. No, I just came out of my bunker. I saw them and I wanted to make them think that I was paranoid for them to calm me down. And you saw Kim, she's like, calm down, Tony, it's okay. So at that point, now I'm saying to myself, okay, Kim got me. Kim thinks she's controlling me because she's calming me down. And that's also, if you want to see the real Tony, you'll see the way I talk with Sarah. You'll never Mm -hmm. see me acting paranoid with Sarah because that's the real me. I would sit there and I would be stern and I would be firm. But with other people, I'm like, okay, okay. Like, uh, okay, okay, yeah, one, one problem. I'm just nervous. I'm just nervous. What do you want me? You know, like, that's my game. I have to do that to make yeah. them think that they're thinking and I'm not, you know? Yeah. You know, one of the things I talked to, I talked to Sophie uh, recently and she was talking about how, yeah, she would notice like, okay, you would, you would do stuff like that. And then she was just said, eventually it was just like, oh, that's just Tony. That's just Tony. Don't <laughs> exactly. mind, don't mind him. And then when you were, you know, uh, putting things together to vote her out, that it didn't really make her feel uh, suspicious because that you had already like set like a baseline of you that uh, going to go do that stuff. And it was harmless. And, and that's how it was from the, even with that ladder, you know how scared I was to climb up that ladder, but I had to climb up that ladder because I wanted them to believe that I really believed that I thought that ladder was sturdy. Mm-hmm. So they could say, this guy, there's something wrong with him. If he thinks that that ladder is sturdy, there's something wrong with him. And that's what I wanted them to believe. So in order to make it, 
as truthful as possible, I climbed up it and I acted like it was supposed to be like that. When yes. I no, it's not supposed to be like that. Did you intentionally make the ladder not sturdy? Could you have made it no. better? No, that was that was my best construction skills that I that I used out there. And Wendell okay. wanted to help me build it. And I was so adamant. I was like, Wendell, I got this, man. It's simple. Just tie it around. The rungs are strong. They just you just can't turn it sideways because the rungs will slide out. Mm-hmm. You know? But no, I was oh man, I was scared. You know how high that was? Oh my God. So I'm up there and I'm thinking, who am I gonna jump on? You know, who I want to get medically evacuated if I land on somebody. So I was probably going to jump on Tyson at that point. He was right under me and I'm looking at him. So if I was going to slip and fall, I was going to jump on Tyson and get him medevaced out of there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything from DeKal that you want to highlight before we talk about uh, what's going on at the swamp? You, you know what, uh, Rob, unless you bring it up, I, I'm not going to remember, man. It's just been so long. Yeah. Well, I guess the thing that I really would love to know from you is that in the beginning of the game, we didn't see a ton from you. And I just wonder that were you hidden more? Do you feel like in the edit or there just wasn't as much going on that we could see at that point in the time? Because then they would reach a point where then it's all Tony at a certain point. But did it feel like that way to you in the game playing? Yeah, you know, I think, I think, I mean, obviously when they edit it, they know who, to, who won, right? The producers know, I guess they know who won, I think, or whatever. But uh, I don't think they wanted to, like, like shove me down people's throats this whole time like they did in yeah. Kageyan, you know? So I think they hit a lot of me because a lot of it was social in the beginning, you know? Me and Kim had great social bonds. Me and Sophie had bonds. Me and Yule, me and Tyson, me and Wendell, me and Nick. Nick was like, we were so close together, me and Nick. Me and Nick were looking for idols all the time out there in the car. When we mm-hmm. saw Kim looking for it and we thought she had it, obviously, unless you've seen her find the idol, you're always going to assume she did it, but you're not going to know for sure. So we were still looking and looking and looking. So there was a lot of stuff we did together, you know. Um, the Sandra incident, me and Sa- Sandra knew about my bunker because I showed her my bunker. Mm-hmm. She didn't just guess that Tony might be hiding somewhere around. I was like, Sandra, look what I built. I built a bunker. Try to talk to people around the wheel- water well so I could hear it and walk away from them so I can hear what they have to say about you when you walk away so I could tell you. Same thing with Sarah with the spy nest. I would tell them to bring people to the, to the well, talk strategy with them, and then come up with an excuse that you have to leave, go pee or something, and leave them there so I can hear what they're saying about you when you walk away. And that was the whole point. So Sandra knew about my spy bunker because I trusted her and I told her about my spy bunker. Now, when you say a sp- a spy bunker... Out. Yeah. So um, the spy bunker, as I understand it, is a hole in the ground, uh, the, the spy bunker. Is, is that what you're talking about? At, Dek- at Dekal, you had a different spy, you had a spy bunker versus a spy nest that we would see later in the game? Yes. And Dekal, by the water well, you didn't see when I was, when I was, when I had debris all over me? I thought you That's, climbed the tree. The, no, no. That was my bunker in Dekal. Okay. When, uh, when Sandra told Kim, Let's, let's go talk somewhere else. We can't talk around here. Because I had a bunker, right, like five feet away from the well with debris, with like, you know, old palm fronds covering myself. And I was in there for a, a whole hour, remember? Oh, that's when I popped out of my bunker. Okay. And, Kim, and, and Kim caught me. They were caught me coming out of somewhere. And I said, oh, I just fell out of a tree. Because that's more realistic that I was climbing a tree looking for an idol yeah. than me coming out of a hole. I'm not going to tell him I came out of a hole. You know? <laughs> right. So that's why I was paranoid. I'm looking yeah. for an idol. I thought the spy bunker was only in Game Changers. I didn't know that the spy bunker actually came to Winners at War. Yeah, no, it came to Winners at War. I had a, I had a spy bunkers, a few of them. I built other spy bunkers later on too, but they didn't work. <laughs> what about any spy shacks? No, no shacks, no shacks. Because a shelter, a shack is only good like when you're around a shelter or something where you can hide. But out there, it was just everything was open, you know? It was tough. Mm-hmm. Okay. No shacks. Let's but look yeah, about- Cassandra ratted me out. Yes. At the swap, yes. you're, you get swapped with Sandra and Kim and you're with uh, Jeremy and Denise uh, for the first time. It seems like you hit it off with Jeremy pretty well right off the bat, right? Yes, right off the bat. And, you know, again, Jeremy was like, you know, he was dancing around um, the notion of getting rid of Sandra. Like he didn't want to come on straight out and tell me, Tony, what do you think about Sandra? Should we get rid of her? So he was, I knew where he was going with it, but I wasn't giving him the time of day because I didn't want to talk about Sandra. And I didn't want him to know that I was strong with her. So when he was giving me those little hints, like, I, I don't know. I mean, if you ever get to talk to him, ask me if he was trying to get that out of me to see if I would vote Sandra out. But the way he was talking to me, I read it like he wanted me to say, you know what? We can get rid of Sandra. Cause he's like, 
um, you know, Tone, man, you know, I want to work with you. We're strong. We're, we're bigger threats. We can, you know, we need to stick together. And I agree with him 100%. And he was like, mate, you know, what do you think we should do to keep our team strong? Because we can't lose the challenge. So what else was he telling me? He was telling me, let's get rid of Sandra because Sandra is the only one that would hold us down from winning a challenge, you know, yeah. instead of getting Denise was great in challenges. So was Kim. So it was me, Jeremy, Kim, and Denise. We would kill challenges, you know, theoretically, right? Because we were strong and then having Sandra instead of Denise or Kim or me or Jeremy. So that's why he was talking to me that way, but I didn't give him the time of day because I was really strong with Sandra. I didn't want, and I didn't want him to know that. So I pretended I wasn't reading this. I wasn't reading what he was trying to get at. So he just left it alone and walked away from that, you know? And that's ask him though, if you ever get to talk to him. Yeah, I, I hope to that. Uh, he said that he'd like to talk uh, down the road at some point, and uh, I hope we get the chance to do it. Uh, when you get the uh, opportunity to work with Jeremy in the game, do you do you know that Jer? Okay, oh, Jeremy is all about shields. He's gonna look at me as a shield. I know Jeremy's a guy who wants to keep me around. Jeremy stole the meat shield strategy from me when he watched me in Kagayan. Spencer and Tasha, I called them my buffers. And then he comes out and he renames, it's my puppy, and he names it, and then he tries to steal my puppy. So, mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, so I knew exactly, you know, he wanted the shield. You should have so named it. You didn't name it. I, I, I named it a buffer, but he named it something better. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so, you know, but that's the game that I played in, in, uh, in Cagayan. When I seen everybody wanted Spencer and Tasha out, I was like, wow, this is perfect. I can hide behind those two. And whenever I say, okay, it's time to get rid of them, they'll all be on board to get rid of Spencer or Tasha which it did happen. So the same way Jeremy plays, you know, like he, he hides behind people that he knows most of the tribe yeah. wants out. So that's what me and, and he Jeremy played with Spencer and Tasha. Was that? Yeah, he played I with Spencer and Tasha. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and, he, and he blew them out, right? It was just a shutout. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, there's no way I want to go to the end with this guy. He just beat two of the greatest players. Tasha and Spencer, they're great players, you know? And mm-hmm. I'm like, wow. He's just, he's just, the guy just smiles at you and you melt, you know, he's like, he's one of those, he has such charisma. He's just a nice, his million dollar smile. You know, he's just a great guy. And when you talk to him, he, he's just so calm and cool and collected, you know, and that's why I'm like, I love this guy and there's no way I could get to the end with him because he'll win. So I needed him just yeah. like he needed me to get further into the game. So, Kim is really the pivotal person here because it seems like in the episode that she could have gone the other way. She could have gone with Jeremy and Denise if she wanted to. How worried were you that Kim was going to maybe switch and go away from you and Sandra? You know, I wasn't, I wasn't really worried because Kim, Kim was a solid player and she knew, she knew we had to stay strong. You know, she, she just knew that. And and she knew if she went against the the car, because here's another thing too, with the, with Wendell, when he went against, uh, when he went, when we saw that Yule was gone instead of Michelle, we all said, "Uh oh, he's in big trouble." He just because he, we were supposed to be the car strong. You know, you mm-hmm. always say that when, when before you go to a swap. Right. We got to stay strong. So when we see he got rid of Michelle, Wendell became target number one. So yeah. I guess I'm assuming that because I was thinking that I'm not going to go against my Dakar tribe, and then everybody's going to come after me because I was loyal. So I think Kim was also, I was thinking that Kim was thinking that as well. So I wasn't too nervous, especially when Kim saw me, when, you know, when I was hiding for so long and then they found me, mm-hmm. she was like, calm down, calm down. She was reassuring me, which is what I was looking for, reassurance, you know, just to see how the situation was. So I wasn't worried about Kim. What I was worried about was when Denise played the idol. That's when I was scared. When yeah. Denise played the idol for herself and for uh, Jeremy, that's when I thought I was going home. I, I thought I was a goner. Yeah. And Sandra says, you know, Hey, use it on one of the guys, uh, you know, that I don't think that Sandra explicitly says, use it on, get, you know, idle out Tony. Uh, she said, I think she says like, uh, one of the guys, but she left it up to, she left it up to Denise, but, uh, that was really the closest that you came to getting voted out of the whole game. Yes. Yes. That's, that's correct. But, uh, we seen in confessional where Sandra was saying, I have to get Tony because I know yeah. Tony's going to come after me at one point. So she and, and Denise and Jeremy were close together. She's not going to get rid of Jeremy. She's going to get rid of me. So I think Sandra, because we had a bond outside the game, I didn't think she wanted it to come across that she was trying to get rid of me, but she wanted to get, she would have loved to get rid of me without her actually getting blood on her hands, you know? And yeah. you know, I'm not mad at her for that. I was mad in the game, but I'm, after the game, I'm not mad. You know, I'm not mad at Sandra anymore, but I know she wanted me gone, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, we were also so when, worried as people who are rooting for Tony that you were going to get screwed at that tribal council because Jeremy could have left. 
Denise could have played her idol. Sandra could have played her idol and Kim could have played her idol. And you would have been the only person like Suri to go out of the game. Horrible. Isn't it? Isn't it horrible? So, so it's just a, you know, because I didn't go out searching for idols and oh, actually Sandra didn't either. She had once, man, that edge. Oh man. Are we going to talk about the edge too? Sure. Because when, when, when they first, but yeah, I was definitely nervous about everybody having advantages. I didn't know at the point, but when they started pulling advantages out, you know, actually watching it on TV, I didn't know until I watched it on TV that Jeremy had that, that Denise had two idols. I didn't know none of that, you know, Kim had an idol. I didn't know that. So yeah. I, I wasn't scared about that. I was scared when she actually played the idols. That's when I was scared. I was like, oh my God, who, who's she putting down? It's gotta be me. She's not going to vote out Jeremy. She's a big matter for Jeremy. She's not going to vote out Kim because they, they already, you know, I saw them spending a lot of time together. But Denise and I also spend a lot of time together also. Yeah. So I got lucky, you know. I got lucky that I formed bonds with Denise, you know. Yeah. Well, not lucky. That's a social part of the game. That's a social game. So when, after Sandra goes out, uh, there's a lot of talk about what's going to go on at once you guys get to the merge. What were you thinking the plan would be once you get to the merge? Did you feel like that Jeremy and Denise were going to be, and uh, were going to be part of what you guys were doing after you got to the merge? Yes. At that point, you know, when, when, when I, when we seen what Denise did with Sandra, we were like, yeah, Denise, I was happy because I was going to put the, I was going to pit everybody against her saying this woman is lethal. She's a deadly, she's a silent killer. We got to get rid of her because she didn't even, nobody even knew what she was going to do. She was doing that all by herself. So I was going to put everybody against her if I needed to, you know, but, but when we first went in there, we were all, um, we were all working together, you know? And when we seen, like I said, when we saw that Wendell got rid of you all, we were all saying, we want to know why Wendell got rid of Yule. And that's what happened with, with the Wendell thing with the Yule. And that's why Kim didn't do it again, like I said, because we knew whoever, when we seen the, type, the, the tribe split ups and the swap, we knew we had it. Me, Kim, and Sandra, we knew we had it because it was three against those two. We just picked one of them off. When we seen um, Wendell, uh, Nick, and Yule, we were like, oh, that's it. They're golden. But then when they went against Yule and got rid of Yule, we were like, uh-oh, you know, there's a problem here. You mm-hmm. know, and that's... That started the whole thing where we were pointing fingers and that's why Wendell went home at the merge because yeah. of that. Pretty All right. Much. So you guys get to the merge before that Tyson comes back into the game. Was that uh, weird for you for to have Tyson come back where that, uh, that you, you guys had uh, talked about saving him. Ultimately he went home. Did, did you have any sort of uh, reservations for Tyson coming back in the game? Yeah, no, when Tyson came back into the game, you know, we, again, we got, we, we, we reunited and we TNT. started talking again. TNT. <laughs> and we started, but he, you know, he didn't trust none of us at that point, you know, but I told him, I said, Tyson, man, we're good, man. You know, uh, you know, people wanted to get you out. You were running around scrambling. He's like, this time I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to be quiet. I was like, yeah, Tyson, be quiet. Just stay quiet. Like I've been doing, I'm just staying under the radar. Let's just, let's just be quiet. And he's like, that's what I'm going to do. You know? And that's what he did. He did it really good. He was staying quiet. He, he went to the shelter. He was just hanging out. He wasn't throwing nobody's name out. And, you know, pretty much he was playing like he was supposed to saying, guys, I'm at your mercy, whatever you want, I'll go with you because he needed to get his footing back into the game at that point, you know, and that's what happened with Tyson. He, he played it smooth when he came back and I wanted to play with Tyson. I know he's dangerous. Everybody knows he's dangerous, but again, you, you need these dangerous players to move ahead. Yeah. You know? But what happened with what, what happened was when we reunited, I went straight to Nick, Nick, what happened? Wendell, what happened? You know, we were talking. So Wendell told me, you know, like you will try to backstab him. He went against him. And, and I wasn't believing that because I knew Wendell and Michelle had a relationship from what players were saying on the island. People knew that they had a dating relationship. I didn't know that. So when I'm listening to this, I was like, oh, of course that makes sense. Of course they got rid of you. And he kept Michelle because he's working with Michelle. So I talked to Wendell and Wendell was telling me that you was trying to backstab him. Then I pulled Nick to the side. Me and Nick went fishing. And again, me and Nick were tight in the car. So we went, we talked and he started telling me about tokens. He's like, yeah, Tone, you know, Wendell came up with some crazy idea about getting Wendell's, uh, getting Ewell's tokens and splitting poverty's tokens with Michelle. And I'm like, what? So then I go up to, I go up to Sophie and I'm trying to plant seeds. Hey, Sophie, I don't know. I, I, Wendell's good to keep around because they were throwing Nick's name out there. They wanted to get rid of Nick. I wanted to save Nick. So yeah. then I started planting seeds with Wendell without people knowing I'm trying to get Wendell out. But I wanted to get Wendell out because at that point I didn't trust him that he backstabbed Ewell. Nick was telling me that he was taking tokens uh, with, he was splitting them with Michelle when they got rid of poverty. And Nick was telling me all kinds of things with Michelle, how, how they're tight. So I went to Sophie and I said, Sophie, Nick was just telling me that Wendell, he just backstabbed Yule. He, he tried to steal uh, Michelle's tokens. So we flipped it to make it look like 
Wendell was a villain, but he was, really wasn't a villain. He, he really wasn't. But mm-hmm. when me and Nick were talking with Sophie and we talked with Sarah and we talked with everybody, we were making it sound like Wendell strong arm Michelle for her token when they got rid of poverty. But that wasn't the case. At least mm-hmm. I, I don't think that's the case, but we were just trying to make it look like Wendell. So then uh, Wendell and Jeremy, Wendell loves Jeremy, you know? Yes. So I wanted to work with them, but then I was telling Jeremy, let me tell you something, Jeremy. Wendell, the whole time we were in the car, was talking about you, how he idolizes you. But at the same time, he's scared of you. So yes, he might want to work with you today, but he'll backstab you tomorrow, Jeremy. Let's just try to get Wendell. And, and Jeremy was so adamant not to get rid of Wendell. I mean, he was fighting hard to yes. save Wendell. And I used that against them. I ran back to everybody. I was like, yo, listen, Jeremy and Wendell have something really strong. Uh, Wendell and Michelle have something really strong. We got to break them up. You know, like that was the thing. That was my pitch to all of them. And, you know, now watching it back on TV, I guess that's how Sophie's mind was working also because they showed Sophie was making that move against Wendell. But it was a little bit of everybody trying to get Wendell out at that point because the, the seeds were being planted that he's working with Michelle. He's strong on poverty for tokens. He's strong on, uh, he, he backstabbed Buell to steal tokens. So that's how the, the picture was painted to get rid of Wendell. And that's how that happened. That went down. Was there ever any discussion of voting out Michelle because she wasn't one of the original DeKal people? When we, at the merge? Yeah, at the merge. No, it was Wendell. We always wanted Wendell because of what happened with Ewell. So we said, if he was, if he's that powerful with Michelle to get rid of Ewell, we got to get rid of Wendell because he's going to backstab all of us. So we didn't even talk about Michelle. It was just strictly Wendell because of what he did with Ewell. So when Sarah comes back from being on the Yara tribe, uh, she's, you know, uh, very close with Sophie now. And also that here comes Ben, who you hadn't worked with uh, yet before in the game. Did you have like an instant bond with Ben or did that sort of like take some warming up for Ben? Um, you know what? I think it was instant on my part. But Ben, he was like, oh, my God, it's Tony freaking Blackos, you know, like he was like that. So I'm saying to myself, please don't don't do that, man, because if you're thinking of the old Tony that you remember, I'm in trouble. I didn't want I didn't want to give nobody any reason. I didn't want to trigger any flashbacks of the old Tony in Cagayan. I didn't want nobody to even think about me as Cagayan. That's why I was so quiet. Anything they wanted to do, I made it sound like I was going along with them. So right now, if somebody came up to me and said, let's get rid of Rob, I'll be like, OK, 100 percent. But then I'll be thinking, like, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think, like with Nick, they were like, well, let's get rid of Nick. So the traction was to get rid of Nick. And then I was like, yes, let's get rid of Nick. But I didn't want to get rid of Nick. So then that's when I would go and I would plant the seeds with the Wendell, not to make it look like it was me that wanted to get rid of Wendell. I wanted them to come up and say, yes, we got to get rid of Wendell. That's right. Let's do it. Let's get rid of Wendell. That's how I would be with those votes. Because mm-hmm. I didn't want people to know that I was trying to steer it. But I definitely was scared of Wendell. I worked with Wendell and the car and I love the guy is smooth. I call him Denzel, you know, like Denzel Washington. Yeah, the, no, the no. Actor. Yes. He, that's how smooth this guy is, you know, and me and Wendell, man, we had a great relay. I used to hit him with sand balls. You know how you make a snowball? Yeah. I used to make sand balls and I used to throw it while he was sitting at the beach. And all you hear was boom. It would hit him on the back and just explode. And then I would go and exfoliate his back. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, I would exfoliate his back. I would, I would pick his hair for him to make sure it looks good. I would make sure that I clean his beard. Like, I, we were boys, you know? Yeah. But I seen that. He, he's, he's really good, man. He's really, I mean, all these players are good. They, they won their seasons, man. They're good. They know what they're doing, you know? And so me, I'm just trying to make myself as less threatening as possible. I didn't want anybody to think that I'm a threat to the game. So I was quiet. Yeah. I was acting poopy. Every game that me and Wendell played, He's going to see if you talk to him, he's going to make it sound like he beat me in all those games, but he didn't beat me. I didn't want to win those games. I wanted just to make it look like I'm a loser. I suck at everything I do, you know? Yeah. I I really, I could see another scenario for this season where, uh, what you and Wendell end up working together very closely. Cause I feel like in, in the same way that Jeremy wanted to work with you, I think that Wendell's game is similar in that. I think he, he wants to, you know, hide behind somebody who's going to be a shield and, and and would probably, I I feel like that you fit a, you know, a a similar role as like uh, his relationship with Dominic from, ghost island where that you could have been the louder person that would have allowed him to get further into the game that, and that's exactly what the intention was until that happened with you all and as yeah. a matter of fact i told wendell i said wendell we're blood brothers man we, we, we have some kind of we're, we're related and he's like what the hell are you talking about i said my urn caused you to win a million dollars oh <laughs> you know, my kagarian urn 
is when they pulled his name out yeah. when he won Ghost Island. That was my urn. You know, yeah. I have that in my basement right now. So I said, we, we're we related, man. We need to stick together. And he was laughing, you know, and we had a good relationship, like I said. But he was never, like, he was never a target of mine until I seen what happened with the Yule. And that's when I was scared of him because he was such, like I said, he was smooth. He, he was quiet. But then when he made moves like that, I was like, oh, man, he's dangerous. You know, and that's why I got scared of Wendell. But I would yeah. love to play with Wendell, you know, much longer than that. So after Wendell went home now, you have so many different relationships. Who did you want to see go out next at this point in the game? I, I don't remember who I wanted. To, Adam, I Adam I goes out next. Yeah. Yes. I, I, like I said, I didn't know who I want. I didn't, I didn't know who I wanted out at that point, but I knew who I didn't want out. So I would wait for the name to be thrown out there. They threw Nick's name out there again. Uh, ben didn't like Nick. Je not like, I, I should, t I take that back. Ben didn't trust Nick. Uh, um, Jeremy didn't trust Nick. So they were, they wanted Nick out and I would sit there and I would agree with them. But at the same time, I didn't want Nick out. I would just pretend that I did. So they wanted to split the votes between Nick and Adam. Okay. And the reason with Adam is because they didn't trust Adam. They say, because he was flip flopping early on. He was trying to make moves early on, but I liked Adam. I worked, I, I, again, I formed a bond with Adam too. We talked and he was like, Tony, let's just work together. And he was, he was being sincere. Him and Denise were close. So I liked Adam too, but I wanted to stay with Nick closer because I thought I could beat Nick. And that's why I wanted to go with Nick to the end. I really wanted to go with Nick to the end, you know? Me, Nick, and Sarah at that point, I wanted to go to the end. And I trusted Nick and I thought he had my back and I thought he was loyal to me until later on I found stuff out. But at that point, I was trying to save Nick over Adam because I had a relationship with Nick. I just, I just met Adam and I loved Adam. And, and you know, he, he's great. He's great. He's yeah. smart. He's a Spencer, you know, he's a Spencer. He knows the game, you know? So, but I wanted to save Nick. So again, so that when they were talking about splitting the boats, it was supposed to go more on Nick and less on Adam. I went mm -hmm. to Nick in front of Jeremy and Ben and say, Hey Nick, you got to throw your vote on Adam. And Jeremy and Ben looked at me and they got so mad. I was like, what, what guys, what happened guys? I thought you guys wanted to get Adam out. And, and if Adam has an idol, Nick's going. So they're like, no, we want a neck out. And I was like, oh, man, let, you know what, guys? Let's just leave it the way it is right now, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's what happened with Nick. I say, I, I, as far as I was concerned in my mind, I thought I was saving Nick. I don't know how, how, how it worked out, like what everybody was thinking, but I thought my perception of it was that I was saving Nick because I wanted to save Nick. So every time that the names were coming out, I was trying to defer, uh, deflect it off of Nick. It seems like to me at this point in the game where, you know, um, you have a really good relationship with the guys, uh, with, 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 uh, Ben, with Jeremy, with Nick, with, with Tyson, Sarah has most of the relationships with the women where she's got a, a great relationship with Kim, uh, with, with Sophie. And, uh, she has like that side of things down. Was that something that you guys talked about in terms of like, okay, let's keep this group together and I've got the guys, you get the women. No, no, it, it just happened to work out that way. But Sarah and I, you know, like all this thing that I'm telling you about, I, 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 me, 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 that's because I'm talking to you about my perception of it. But a lot of it, had, me and Sarah were bouncing ideas off each other all the time. We would meet in secret and private. I would go to the bathroom to the right. She would go to the bathroom to the left and I would run around and meet her. And we would talk behind the bushes real quick, just bounce ideas off each other. We had to be on the sneak tip and we did a great job at that. Nobody even Nobody even noticed that we were together until later on in the game. But we were always bouncing ideas off each other. She would say A, I would say B. And then we would just meet in the middle and say, okay, A and a half. You know, like it would be craziness like that. But, yeah. uh, but whatever. But her and Sophie were really tight. Me, me and Jeremy were really tight. Me and Nick were really tight. Uh, Sarah and Kim were really tight. And I guess, like me, I, I know, I'm, I'm, I, like I told, I don't know, I did other interviews where I said, I don't know how to speak about life, right? I don't know much things. These people, Sarah, she can talk to you about everything. Kim can talk to you about everything. Jeremy, everything. Kim, ev these people, they can talk about every. I can't. I don't know sports. I don't watch sports. Jeremy and Kim were talking about sports all day. I'm like, oh my God, here we go again with the sports. And I would have to walk away. So Sarah, the same thing. These social players were so yeah. strong. So I knew that I could only give small dosages of Tony's social game. So I would come to you and talk to you just enough where I'm not annoying, but enough for you to form a bond with me. And then I would walk away and let you carry on with your sports and your food and your traveling. Cause I don't do none of that. Michelle, yeah. another one can talk to you about everything. I can't, I don't know. I don't know about everything. 
I just know about family. Yeah. What, what do you talk about when you're not playing Survivor and you're, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, if you, you're hanging out with friends, like what kinds of things do you, uh, do you, like, what are your interests, Tony? I feel like we know nothing about you. I, I don't. I, I have nothing. I don't have a passion for anything, man. I suck. I, there's, there's nothing that I'm, that I, I hate it. I hate that I don't, there's nothing. I, I don't care. I love cars, but I don't care about them that much. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. I love construction, but, I, you know, I'll build a beautiful house. But the next day I want to do something else. You know, no matter what it is, I, I want to build a garden for my mom and I built it to the best of my ability. And then I'm like, oh, okay, let me go down. Like, I don't have a passion for any one thing. It sucks, yeah. man. It sucks to be like that. What's your favorite TV show? I don't have any. No. Movie? Don't have any. I, I don't have anything. I, I like Nothing? a lot of things. I like a lot of things, but I don't have favorites. Yeah. I just don't. I just, I just never, I never just, I never, I never been like that. Yeah. It's crazy. It sucks. It really does. What about baby cakes? You just watch whatever she wants to check out? <laughs> I always ask baby cakes. What are you doing? Baby cakes watches. I, I mean, I watch AGTV with her. We watch yeah. the IG channel, the investigative discovery, but it's not like, Oh, I got to watch this. Oh, I got to go watch this. Oh, I got to go watch survivor. I got to go watch. No, it's not like that. I'll watch it. I'll be entertained while I watch it, but I don't, I don't dissect it. I don't, I don't bean for it. You know, it's, it's just crazy, man. I, you know, I just, just go with the flow with life, man. You know, if yeah. today, like today, right now I was in the pool. I was loving the pool, having fun. Now I'm done with the pool. I'm like, oh, I'm done with that. You know, let me, let me go on the podcast now. And when I'm done with the podcast, I, I don't want to do another podcast until next week. That's how I am, man. It's, it's weird. Yeah. It it's, it's not. What were you thinking when Adam got up to go and try to pull the idol off of the podium? <laughs> the, guy, the guy's a nut job, man. I mean, <laughs> I, I, if I would have known... Like, you know, he told Michelle, he thinks that that was an idol. If I, if like Michelle would have told me or something like Adam thinks that that thing on the podium is an idol. I don't even know. What is it called? The floor? Do, floor de lee. Yeah. Floor de lee. I would have tackled that. As soon as I saw him walking towards that podium, I would have jumped on him and tackled him. And I would have been screaming, somebody get the podium. Cause mm -hmm. I, I would have believed that was, I would have believed it was real. Right. There's a, that thing was just right there. And I never thought about it, but he thought about it, you know? Yeah. He, he, I mean, w watching him, on TV, oh my God, he had me in hysterics. And I'm so glad that even, you know, what people would say is a boneheaded move. I'm so glad that before or after he made the boneheaded move, he explained himself, knowing what he was doing. You know what I mean? Because if he didn't know that what he was doing might be looked at as boneheaded, then he'd be a bonehead. But being that he knew what he was doing might be perceived as boneheaded, that's, 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 uh, he's bright, man. He knows. Mm -hmm. You know, like the move when he says, I know people at home are going to be saying, why the heck are you telling Boston Rob this? But, I'm, I, but he was taking a chance. But that's what you have to do, man. Right? You have to make those chances to, to turn the game around and take control of the game. You mm -hmm. have to. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I, when he went up for that thing, I was like, oh, my God. Because I, I want that, that, that tribal was really, really long. And that's why I came out when he was like asking us, guys, who are you voting for? And that's when I looked at him, I said, come on, Adam, man, that's not how it works. Please just go up there, yeah. just write a name and come back down because it was long and I felt bad. And actually I was getting nervous because it was so long that the more he kept politicking about trying to change votes or whatever, it could have happened because people could have got nervous and did something different. So I just wanted to get it over with at that point when he was, when he was talking about oh, do this and do that, Nick, you know, how come Nick feels comfortable now? I was like, oh my God. Mm hmm uh, in that same round, that's when uh, Sarah gives up her reward to Nick about, uh, she says that she just wanted to do something nice for, for Nick. Uh, and you and Sarah had a conversation. You talked about how Sarah, come on, you, know, you just got caught up in the moment there. Um, and she said, no, 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 no. I just was doing something nice uh, for him. Um, for, was, was that a bigger disagreement between the two of you? I mean, no, it wasn't a disagreement. I just, you know, I, I told her, I mean, she was adamant that, no, nobody's going to see it like that. And I was adamant, like, yes, they are, because mm -hmm. I see it like that. If I didn't, if I wasn't close with you outside the game and trusted you, I would think that you did that for a good, uh, as a good strategic move. But knowing her, she was legit. She really did it from the goodness of her heart, because you do get caught up in a moment. Yeah. You get caught up in a moment out there, you know, and, and that's what she did. She got caught up and she got caught up and she did that. And you seen, they showed on TV that, that people were talking about that. And the thing with Jeremy, like me and Jeremy were close. So I would pretend to Jeremy that I was, me and Sarah were not as close as we were. I would tell Jeremy, yo, Jeremy, you know she did that. You know she did that on purpose, man. And he yeah. was like, sure she did. I had to talk like that to make it look like I wasn't defending her, to make it look like I'm against her. 
And I did that with him the whole through the whole time through. And that's why he believed and trusted in me that much, you know, because I would like with Nick too. I'm like, yeah, Nick is definitely against us, Jeremy, man. You could tell he's lying. Like I would do that through, throughout the whole time I was with Jeremy because I knew I couldn't go with Jeremy to the end. So I knew it was only a matter of time. I just needed him because the thing is you can't, you can't flip flop with one person. You need a, dip, a whole different tribe. So on tribe A was my real alliance. I would tell him, listen, I got to play double agent to see where the idols are, to see where the advantages are. You know, this game is full of them. Now I would go to my- And that's alliance. Sarah and Ben and Sophie. Sarah, Sarah yeah. Ben, Sophie, Nick. Okay. All right, Denise. I would tell them that, listen, I have to go with Jeremy, with Michelle, um, maybe with Kim also at that point. I have to go with them and pretend I'm with them. I have to do that so I can know where the advantages are. Then I would go to Jeremy, Michelle. Hey, guys, listen, Sarah is telling me this. I don't know. She's throwing your name out there, Jeremy. You know, like I would do stuff like that to make it look like I'm giving them real info. But I would just make it up. And I told Sarah, I said, Sarah, I'm going to tell Jeremy. I'm going to throw your name out there. She's like, don't do that. I was like, please, Sarah, please trust me. I got this. I know what I'm doing. I have to do that to gain more trust with them. And it worked, man. You know, like I, I would make it look like I wasn't with Sarah. So, and then when they wanted to break up Sarah and Sophie, I would lean it more towards Sophie, you know, instead of Sarah. But would you ever be okay if somebody in your alliance, if say Sarah was like, all right, Tony, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go and I'm, I'm also going to be, be a double agent. I'm going to go pretend to tell, you know, uh, Denise and Kim and uh, they were, I'm going to tell them to put your name down tonight. Oh, God. <laughs> I wouldn't be okay with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And neither was she. She wasn't okay with it. She yelled at me, but yeah. you know, I, it was too late. I said, I already said it. Yeah. You know? But then I told her, don't worry. They, I won't let it gain any traction. Yeah. All right. Well, let, let's get into where, you know, uh, things really start to pick up for you because it's like a tale of two halves for you where now it's like the second half and you are just like, uh, just shot out of a cannon for the rest of the way. We get to the family visit. And of course, uh, you have, uh, you know, uh, this uh, great emotional scene when baby cakes and your wife and uh, or your daughter and son come out to uh, see you on the island and you're melting. And uh, that was a you know, beautiful scene to watch. Was that sort of like the switch where once you got to the family visit that you felt like, okay, now I saw my family and now I can go and basically go for broke? I think, I, I think that that, it, that is true uh, subconsciously probably. It's not like I said, okay, that's it, it's over. But throughout the whole game under Kyle, especially when we were bonding with families and everybody had kids, we were looking forward because we knew that the kids were going to come out because they were asking us for mm-hmm. permission, passports for the kids. So we, we were like, oh, please, let's just see our families. So for me, there's no way I would want to get rid of Kim before a family visit. You know what I mean? Cause we had bonds over the kids. I wouldn't yeah. want to get rid of Amber because of the kids, you know, I wouldn't want to get rid of anybody because of the kids. We all wanted to see our kids. So it was like, we were all holding back because that really hurts, man, to get rid of somebody when they know that the kids are coming. So that was a lot of it. We were like, we were holding back. So when we all saw our family, I think we all let loose, you know, me mm-hmm. more so than others because I happened to win that immunity. And, and uh, unlike I, mean, I won't say most survivor players, but a lot of the survivor players, when they win that immunity, they're like, oh, they feel yeah. relieved. Now they can sit back. Not me. When I win, I never won it before, but when I have an idol or when I win immunity, I feel more empowered and I just, I just, you know, pedal to the metal and I just go full force because I'm protected. I can Play do more whatever aggressive. I want and nothing's yeah. going to happen to me. So that's when I get crazier when I have that protection. Okay. okay. So at this point in the game, I've talked with Kim and I've talked with Sophie. They, they talked about how, you know, things really got very heated uh, with, with all the players at, at this point in time, that there's a conversation that Tyson had with Sarah, which really set off a whole chain of events. Can you just talk about what your experience was with going through this vote where Tyson is ultimately going to get voted out? So what happened with Tyson, um, no, no, wait. Tyson wasn't getting voted out then. That was supposed to be Jeremy, wasn't it? It was, it, it was Tyson ultimately, yeah. But Jeremy is going to leave okay. the tribal council. Yeah. yeah. So what happened was Tyson was, was just stirring up the pot again. He did what he did in the call the first time. He just started throwing names out there and causing a lot of trouble between everybody. And uh, so the consensus was like, we got to get rid of Tyson and this and that. Tyson pulled Sarah to the side down by the beach. Sarah comes back to me and says, Tony, I just had a heart to heart with Tyson. He's telling me he has an idol and everything. And I'm like, Sarah, he doesn't have an idol. Don't trust him. He's lying. He doesn't have an idol. If he had an idol, he wouldn't be doing what he's doing, stirring up the pot 
throwing everybody's name out there, trying to cause chaos. He would be slick enough and use his idol. So she was like, I don't know, Tony, I think he does. She says, I got to have more conversations with him to try to see, to try to get a better read on him. But that night they had a real heart to heart. So I was saying, Sarah, please, let's just try to get rid of Tyson. I don't think he has an idol. So then he goes and he tries to stir up trouble with Kim. He tried to stir up trouble with Sophie. I think he was trying to put the girls with one another and he was going to stay with me, uh, Jeremy, uh, Ben at that point, I believe it was. I can't remember, I, I can't remember who it was, but the, the whole thing was we were going to go and we were going to vote Sophie out. That's what they thought. That's what I was telling them. Yes, Tyson, I'm with you. Jeremy, mm -hmm. I'm with you. We're going to vote Sophie out. Not Sarah, because it, it could have been Sarah. But again, I, I took the, I deflected it off Sarah to Sophie. So I was like, okay, we'll get Sophie out. Because I didn't want the traction to even be there. Even if it wasn't going to happen, I didn't want Sarah's name to be there. So when we went, uh, when we were going to that tribal council, it was going to be Jeremy 100%. All right. So then when Jeremy gets up and does a Houdini, I, I don't think, it didn't show it, but as Jeremy, if you talk to Jeremy, ask him because he mentioned this to me. So when Jeremy got up and left, Jeremy was looking and I knew he was looking through my peripheral vision. So I was counting. I was going like this, me, Tyson, Kim, you know, I was going like, yeah, yeah acting like I'm counting it. And I'm looking and I'm looking at Jeremy and I'm like, what are you doing? Why you left me? You know? So I'm, I'm pretending to count. So later when we get back to the camp, Jeremy would be like, yo, Tone. I was like, Jeremy, why'd you leave us? I didn't have the numbers. I didn't know what to do. I was with you. We were going to vote. So yeah, why'd you leave? I was counting and we didn't have, he said, yeah, I saw you counting tone, you know, and those yeah. little things, man, those little things is what just makes you really believe in somebody, you know, it's those little subtle things. And I was, and I was, and what happened that night, man, I don't know if I, am I, am I going to, you're fast? doing great. You're doing okay. great. Yeah. Awesome. Where's the bell? All right. Good. <laughs> all right. So that night when, so Sophie stood us all up and she was like, you, yeah. know, this, this, you know, everybody knows what's going on. It's us against them. I didn't like that at all. You know, I was like, oh, I do not like this, you know? So she pulled us off the side and, and we wanted to get Tyson out. But because of what I told you, it was Sarah thinking that he might have an idol because he was pretending he had an idol. We were reluctant to vote for Tyson straight up. So we was like, let's just get rid of Jeremy. All right. So we went in there to get rid of Jeremy. That was the real plan of my side. But on Jeremy's side, he thought we were getting rid of Sophie. So when we go back to camp, I see Michelle. She's standing up with Kim. Those two are standing up with their backs turned to the ocean. Yeah. Sarah and Sophie are sitting down on a log, looking at them, talking to them. And, and, and I just happened to be, you know, around in the area. And Sophie tells them that the whole plan the whole night was to get rid of Jeremy. And Tony was in on it. Michelle and Kim call me over. <laughs> And they're like, Tony, what was the plan tonight? I said, I said, it was, you know, uh, what, what do you mean? They're like, Sarah and Sophie just told me that you were in on it to get rid of Jeremy. I said, what? I said, I said, that wasn't the plan, guys. And they're just staring into the ocean. Sarah and Sophie are staring into the ocean. And Kim and Michelle are looking right at me like, like, what's going on here? I go, I run to Jeremy full speed. And I said, Jeremy, Jeremy, Michelle's against you, bro. She's against you. They're right. She's over there right now talking to the girls. They wanted to get you out. I had no idea. I mm -hmm. told you not to trust Michelle. So I played it off. He's like, what are you talking about, Tone? I said, Jeremy, I just heard Michelle, Kim, Sarah, and Sophie talking about they were going to get you out tonight, man. You know, so I played it off like that. So by the time Michelle got back to Jeremy to explain to him that Sarah and Sophie told them that I was in on the plan, he was like, no, Tony already told me that you were already a part of it. So now Michelle is trying to defend herself, telling Jeremy, Jeremy, I had no idea. They just told me that. And then I told Jeremy, I said, Jeremy, they were going to blindside me. I said, I'm getting rid of Cyril. I'm getting rid of Sophie. Whatever we can do, we got to get rid of them because they were lying to me. I had no idea you were going home. I said, I had no idea. I just did whatever they told me at that point because I didn't have the numbers because you left me. That's how I was talking to Jeremy to yeah. try to because I needed to have two different alliances. There was no way I could just stay in one. You just can't do that. I needed options because I needed to turn on my alliance sooner or later, you know? Mm -hmm. So I needed to have two different alliances and that was the only way I could do it by pretending to be fake. I had to be fake. So nobody knew who I was real to. Sarah, Sophie, and, and Ben and Denise didn't know I was real to them. Kim, uh, Jeremy, and um, um, Michelle didn't know I was, like they had no idea. And that was yeah. beautiful. Yeah. 
All right. Well, the, now things are getting really wild because now uh, we saw Kim's idol got played, and you know that idol's going to go back into the game too. Here's the thing. So again, me and Nick were tight, and and when again when his name got thrown out at a previous tribal, him and Michelle were at the log by themselves. Remember when they felt like and they, and, I, and, I, and I was the voice of reason. Mm-hmm. You know that. Remember when I was then I was telling Nick, calm yeah. down, man. That's how you He's do like, it. I'm just going to go crazy. Yes. And he says, nobody's looking at Kim and she has an idol. I said, what? Mm-hmm. And I said, what'd she say? And Michelle just, Michelle's face just dropped. Like, why did you tell him that she has an idol? So when, and I said, yo, Nick, she has an idol. Okay, Nick, let's just work together, man. Don't blow up your game. You know, that's not how you do it. Let's work together. I'm with you, man. I saved you. I'm telling you, I saved you, bro. They were trying to get rid of you with the Wendell. They try to get rid of you with the item. And you seen your name being thrown out there. I was there. I had your back. So let's work together. So he told me Kim had an idol. So, so now our job, me and Nick, our job was to make Kim nervous enough to play her idol. So let me just fast forward it and then we'll go back and, and fill in the middle. You got but it. When we went to that tribal where she played her idol, Kim looked at me, she's like, Tony, should I play it? And, and, I, and I was acting like I was lying to her. So I was like looking down, I was like, I don't think so, Kim. I, I, I don't know, you should just save it. I don't know, you should just save it. I wasn't even looking at her because I wanted her to get scared to use it. So when she used it, she wasn't going home. But when she uses it, she lost it. And then I would have told her, I told you not to play it, Kim. I told you you were safe. You know, so I was going to play it like that. Nick is up there telling her, Kim, use it. Save yourself. That's what he told her. And I'm like, oh, my God. So then when we got back to the, when we got back to the, tr- uh, to the camp, I was like, Kim, why did you play the idol? I told you you were good. She's like, I know, Tony, but you made me nervous the way you were looking. I was like, yeah. And I said, yeah. And you heard Nick. Nick told you, save it for yourself. Save it for yourself. And she thought that he said, save yourself. But it says, it said, Nick said, save it for yourself. You know, it was crazy, man. Those little, little things, man. You know, yeah. those little things that you, you can't, and you can't leave it in a confessional unless they ask you about it. So a lot of things, a lot of little things that were done on the island, especially for my part too, that I know, they didn't ask me for it. So I can't, I'm not going to give them a confessional. Those little things is what, what really makes those bonds grow strong. Because people ask, why is this guy with him? Why did this guy believe him? Oh, Jeremy's stupid for believing Tony. No, he's not stupid. The, the, little, the little things that like that, me going to him first before Michelle went to him and telling him what's going on, he believed that. Me doing those little counting, he be- so any normal person would believe that. You know? Mm-hmm. It doesn't make him a bad player. It just, yeah. you know. Tony, you're so fast. I feel like that you play faster than anybody else that's ever played the game. And I feel like that what it allows you to do is that you're able to do these things so quickly. And if if anything is ever the wrong thing, I feel like that you're able to then so quickly then just go right to the next thing if one of the things that you try isn't working. Is that intentional? 100%. What's intentional is that I don't get caught up. I don't yeah. get caught up. Like if I want Jeremy out today and something happens, I don't lose. I, I don't lose. No problem. Okay. We can't get him today. All right. Boom. Let's think of something else. It's, it's adaptability, right? You got to just, just jump at it. But you know, as far as the fastness is concerned, I have time to think what's best for my game because I do it at night. These people don't have that luxury. They don't have the luxury of thinking about the game in, a, in advance. They only can think about the game when you're talking to them right there on the fly. That's hard to do. That, I, I mean, I know I can't do that. I can't just think of my game, what to do next and what to do next and what to do next and what to do next while I'm talking to you right here in person. Yeah. And then somebody else comes up to me. And that's why they were like, they, they, they're mine because there was a lot going on. But me all along, I already knew what I wanted. The final result, I knew who I wanted to go home. So all that little chit chat, it was coming back and forth all day long. These people's minds were like, okay, okay, well, what, what, all right, let's just do it, whatever. But I already, I had the time to think about it all night. So to yeah. me, it was, I wasn't lost. I wasn't confused. I wasn't, I wasn't like, you know, like, like, oh, enough already. Yeah. And, and a lot of people were like that out there. So your first superpower is that you don't need as much sleep as everybody else. And then your second superpower is that you're able, you think through all of these different scenarios that could come up during the next day. And then when they happen, you're ready to go. Whereas you're not thinking on the fly, like all Boom. these other people are doing. Boom. Right there. That, that's the key for my game. Cause I'm not like that. I there you go. Thank yeah. you. I, for me, I know that works for me. It worked for me in Kageyan. I would think two, three steps ahead. And in Kageyan, I messed up a lot. And, and, I could, and I can go back and repair that because I had all the time to think about it at night. 
If I went to sleep and woke up in the morning and then it's game time, back to strategy, back to people talking in your face, back to the games, back to the challenges, you don't have time to think about that stuff. And, that, and, you, and you're lost. Yeah. So that helped me a lot. So that idol is back in play. You're out looking for it. Then Nick wakes up. Nick comes and joins you very, very quick. Again, you tell Nick, Hey, Nick, go check the well that that's where let's split up here and make sure you tell me if you find it. Uh, also was what yeah. you said to him. So, so obviously, you know, again, the way they edit it, they wanted to make it look funny how he just pops up into scenes. Right. We saw, yeah. I don't know what, what does that, what does that do for the fans to watch Nick popping up? I don't know, but, I, didn't, I wasn't too happy with the way they edited Nick because me and Nick, we played good, man. We, we were playing good games. So Nick, me and Nick talked about it. We flushed Kim's idol. You know? yes. At least that's what our perception was. We wanted to flush our idol. Whether it, we made her do it or not, who knows? But that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to flush her idol because we knew she had an idol and we knew we were going to go look for it. And sure enough, we did go look for it. Nick says he's going to wake up early in the morning. Me, I was up all night looking for the idol. you know. And then I would go back to camp. I would see him there. He would wake up and then he came and he saw me. So that, that was on the fly though when I told him to go somewhere else because I wanted to find it on my own. I wanted to have that power by myself. I didn't want to share it with Nick. Although I, I was working with Nick, I still didn't want to share it with him, you know? So that's why I sent him somewhere else where I was looking. Yeah. Um, you ultimately are going to find the idol. And for the first time, you have an idol here in uh, Survivor. Six or something, right? Yeah. Survivor Winners at War. So you're back. You have, you have, the, you have the idol and things are looking good, but... Uh, you're about to be extorted, Tony. Oh my God. <laughs> Woo. Man, I t I'll tell you, Rob, when, when they first introduced, when we went on the beach and Jeff was talking about tokens and how people are going to bequeath these tokens to you, I lost complete interest in the tokens. I didn't think about them. I didn't care about them because in order for you to get a token bequeathed to you, you have to be on the losing side, right? You have to be working right. with something that just got voted off. And, and those are the only people that are going to get tokens. I didn't want to be on the losing side. I wanted to be on the majority. I'm the one, I want to be the one that was voting people out. So I knew I wasn't going to get no tokens. So I didn't care for them. I didn't, I didn't care what they were going to amount to. I didn't even think about it at all. So I, I didn't care about those things. Um, so when I did get an advantage, I was like, Oh my God, I was wrong all this time. Somebody on the other side does love me. Right. Yes. So I, I, yeah. So I seen that scroll. I was so excited. I took that bag and I told, you know, I started running with it and they stopped me midway, the producers. They're like, hold on, you, you can't get there before we get there. So then I'm just pacing back and forth, waiting for them. And they're like, okay, they're there. So I start running with the bag and then I slid into home base. I'm tearing it open. And, I, and man, let me tell you, Rob, I was so happy because, you know, I wanted an advantage. You know, I didn't, have, I didn't get to play with any of these. You know, people are getting tokens bequeathed to them and everything. So when I was reading that, I was so happy. I was so happy until I read the last line and later on come to find out that they, the production, they purposely left it for the last line mm -hmm. just to make the emotion go from here to here. And it worked, man. It, it killed me. It hurt me inside. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the great scenes in the whole season was you getting the extortion advantage and going through and your emotions going from being so happy to ultimately learning about what, what it actually meant for you. But I don't think anybody else could have then pulled off what you did where then you go to work, go to get those tokens and you, and you, and you have to, cause you're playing the, you're, you're playing the middle and uh, there's nine people and this could be a four, four vote. I definitely need it. I wasn't thinking about splitting it, but I definitely know that votes, you need votes. You, you need numbers. You need, you need to play, you need to play mm -hmm. the game. So, and that was a great thing that I did have the two sides because I went to my, my fake alliance first because I wanted to wipe them out of their tokens because if they went home, I wouldn't have to pay them back. So I went to Michelle first and Michelle came out with that fake lie. You've seen a fake lie. Oh, yeah. she's spend it. And she came up, you know, she was smooth with that lie. And I didn't you pay bought it. it. Yeah. At that moment, yeah. Moment or at that moment, you know, moment at that moment I did buy it. I was like, Oh, okay. Okay. But you know, at that, at that time, I don't care about her telling me the truth or not. I just wanted tokens. So when she told me, no, next, I went out to the next one. I went to Jeremy. Then I went to Nick. Then I went to Ben. Ben was really hard to give up that token. He was hard. So what happened was, <laughs> and you know, Ben, Ben is the type of guy that he can only be fake for so long. You know, yeah. me, I could be fake though. Throughout this whole podcast, I could pretend that I like you if I really don't. <laughs> but 
But I, yeah. I do like you, but I'm just saying. Thank you, Tony. I can't, if I had to. Yeah. But so Ben, when he doesn't like you and he knows he's, he doesn't want to work with you, he's not going to pretend that he wants to work with you and he, he's not going to pretend he likes you. So it was very clear that he didn't want to be with Jeremy because he knew they, he wanted Jeremy out and he, 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 just, he just didn't want to be fake, you know? So when me and Jeremy went up to Ben and we were like, Jeremy was telling Ben, Ben, you got to give Tony a token. No, I don't. I don't got to give nobody a token. Let me think about it. You know, he would yeah. go crazy because he really wanted his tokens. So the Nick, Nick really wanted tokens. He was crazy for tokens. So, you know, you have me not caring about tokens at all. I don't care what they're worth. And then you had these guys that really want to hold on to them because they think it's going to amount to something. So when I went to Jeremy, Jeremy was real quick to give me the tokens because again, I was part of his alliance and they needed my vote because numbers, right? So yeah. Michelle didn't have it, so she went to Jeremy. So Nick gave it to me because again, they, they, Nick was working with me on, on either side because Nick would go with me. Like I would tell Nick, Nick, let's just get, you know, later on you'll see we got rid of Sophie. So Nick bounced with me on the other, on the other side also. So Ben didn't want to give it to me. So then I had to go to Ben and say, Ben, listen, man, trust me, bro. I have enough tokens, Jeremy and them, but we have to play it off that you're giving me tokens, but I'm with you. I'll give you a token back. I didn't know how I was going to pay these people back. Mm -hmm. But then I want immunity. So I was, you know, yeah. thank you. So did you have three to start or you had two to start? Uh, I had three because I, they, they gave me one. Oh, and then yes. one, and you would want, you just want so, two. So okay. I had three. So okay. I got one from Jeremy, one from Nick, and one from Ben. Okay. And then you had to pay six to not be extorted. And then yes. you won two. Who did you pay back? This has been a big question for the fans. I know. Uh, you know what? I believe I paid back Nick and I paid back Ben. Okay. Because I wasn't going to pay back Jeremy because he was going to be the next one gone. Yes. And Jeremy was pissed. He's like, Tone, I was the first one to give you that token. I said, I know, Jeremy, but you've seen how Nick was crying and you've seen how Ben was crying. You, you were cool with it, man. I got you, you know, but because you I paid him back. I did pay. Oh, absolutely. I paid yeah. back all my debt. And you know, it's weird. They didn't show on that because they made a big deal about it. So, you know, production would say, so, you know, you, you're, you're a type of person that always wants to pay your debt. You're never in debt. You don't want no collections coming after you. And I would be like, I always pay my debt. I don't care what I have to do. I got to pay my debt. I said, and that's probably one of the reasons why I'm even winning these immunities because deep down inside subconsciously, I need those tokens. I need to win to pay my, back my debt. So that could have been something that I won immunity because of too, you know, without okay. knowing. Wow. Okay. But I pay so my debt. I always pay my debt. Yeah, because you owed people. You had to, yep. well, you had to win immunity. It pushed you pay. over the yeah, edge. I, how am I going to pay? I, I can't just be, be, be a loser and not pay my bills and say, oh, you know, I, I don't got it. I can't pay you if I don't got it. I got to go out there and try to get it, you know? Yeah. So I, yeah. Think, I think subconsciously that probably helped me. Okay. At what point, what did you see that made you feel like this is the time to go and make a move for Sophie? Um, well, one, the, the main thing, I'll get back to the little thing. The main thing was that night when she told Kim and Michelle, that I was part of that group to get rid of Jeremy. I yeah. pulled her to the side. I said, Sophie, why'd you do that? And she says, she says, Tony, they all know that we're, 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 we're a team. They all know that. We're, why are you hiding it? There's no reason to hide it. And I'm saying to myself, because I want to hide it because I'm, I'm playing a double agent with these people. I can't blow that up. You can't blow that up because you don't know, you know, they're not going to come after you. They're going to probably come after me. So when I was talking to her, she felt really bad. And, uh, I don't, I can't remember. She got emotional, but she, I think she got a little emotional. She's like, I just, I just don't know, Tony, we're, we're, we're a team, you know, cause she knew I was upset. You know, I was like, Sophie, mm -hmm. you, should, you shouldn't have done that. Why did you do that? So, um, and I was, that was, that was 90% of the reason why I had to get rid of her because when she did that, I was like, you know what? She's just, she's on her own path to her, to her end game. She doesn't care about me. She doesn't care about nobody else, but Sophie at that point. And then uh, the other reason, Sarah told me she had an idol. I knew she had an idol because Sarah told me about it. Yeah. So again, I told Nick, I said, Nick, Sophie has an idol. Let's pull a fast one. They didn't show that I knew about her idol, you know, for whatever reason. But Nick, she has an idol. Let's, let's pull a move on her. And that's why Nick was also, because Nick wanted idols. He was looking for idols all the time. Me and Nick were always looking for idols, you know. As a matter of fact, when we want to reward in the car, and the car tribe, we want to reward, I don't remember if it was a, what, I think it was a shish kebabs or chicken kebabs. Yeah, yeah. Me and Nick were trying to lure everybody to the beach to wash up. And me and Nick were like lifting up everything, looking underneath the trays for like idols or clues, you know, mm -hmm. we searched everything. So that's another reason why me and Nick got close bond because we were doing things together where, you know, I was his accomplice. He was my accomplice, you know? Yeah.
So, so go ahead. Back to the Sophie, right? So yeah. that's why. So ninety percent of it was when she she threw me under the bus by telling them that I wasn't working with with uh that I was going to get rid of Jeremy because that hurt. Two, she had the idol. Three, because she made it clear at tribal council that she's the one that's going to make call the shots, and and I didn't like that. I didn't like that, the way she corralled all of us because not only that it makes her look like she's calling the shots, but now it shows everybody that I'm one hundred percent with you because you, you just never know who you're working with until you see something like that. Hey guys, come around here. This is the move we're making. And I yeah. use that against her by telling Jeremy, I say, at that point, Sophie thought I was working with her, Jeremy, what am I supposed to do? So I had to go along with her and vote Tyson out. You left, I didn't have the numbers, that's why we voted Tyson. But Sophie would have gone home if you would have stayed there, which was false, it wasn't true, you know? Was any part of you afraid that you saw that, you know, Sophie and Sarah, they had a relationship with Kim. Now Kim and Denise are on board to vote against Jeremy in that, in that spot. Were you concerned that the women might be getting together at that point and then uh, do having a women's alliance that the way there were five, I believe there were five women at this point in the game and only four men left. Yeah, we talked about it. Jeremy and I talked about it. We were like, Kim, well, Jeremy more than me because he was like, that's what Kim does, Tone. You see how social she is with these ladies. Kim's main thing is to get the girls together. She did it in her season. You know, like Jeremy was telling me these things, and I was like, yeah, absolutely. I see that happening, you know. I can see that happening like that. So, um, and that's why when I had the opportunity, you know, all those little things, they come together. The, you know what, Rob, man? There was a point where I was 99.9% .9 sure when I was in my spy nest, I heard Kim talking with Nick that they wanted me out. So yeah. during a confessional, I'm talking about how, uh, how I want to get Kim because she's telling Nick that she wants me out. And they were looking at me like, w when did you hear that? So I don't know if I was dreaming or hallucinating because I, I, they didn't show it, one. Number two, you know, I, I was asking Kim and Nick, did they talk at the tree? And they don't remember talking to, at, at the tree, so I don't remember. But I definitely know Ben and Nick, definitely 100% sure I heard them talking. And that's when I turned against Nick. And because Nick was talking to Ben at one point, he's like, I think we should get Tony. And Ben was like, no, nope, no, nope, I'm not budging. Tony's with me. And that's when I said, okay. And I left in a confessional. I said, Ben, 100% I trust. Nick, now I can't trust no more. But yeah, so I don't remember. But when I heard Kim talking to Nick about trying to get me out, that's when I was like, you know what? I still want to work with Nick. I still think I have a good reputation with Nick. But Kim, Kim is lethal. She's going to try to come after me with the girls maybe. Yeah. And that's when I went to Jeremy you know, later on, you see when I threw her under the bus. Yeah. So in terms of just to uh, stick with Sophie for uh, uh, just a little bit more, uh, what was the point that you realized that the Sophie thing was going to happen? Because you really, you wait until the last second to talk to Jeremy about uh, making the move against Sophie. Oh yeah. But it was early on when, when I, I mean, from that night, when I seen what she you did, knew, you knew for a couple of days, you were going to make yeah, the Sophie that move. night, that night from tribal, when she did that to me, I, you know, I had already had it and I couldn't tell Sarah nothing. Yeah. So, so I just had to go along with whatever, again, I, I would go along with whatever story they were telling me until it was ready for me to, to, to turn it to the way I wanted it to go. So the same thing with this boat, this boat was very crucial that nobody knew about it before we went to tribal. Yeah. So that's what, what, I had to, this is so interesting with this. So, so, you know, so, you know, you're going to do this for two days. It's not like you think of it. Oh, uh, Hey, I've got an idea for tonight's, but, nope. and you sit on it, you wait, you don't say Crazy. anything to anybody. Crazy. How, how much time was there before tribal council before you told Jeremy the plan? Well, typically on, as soon as you see the sun going down, that's when you know things are going to get locked down. And what happened was every, and you know, and production sees you, they, they see yeah. there's no activity going on. Nobody's talking. Everybody's just complacent. They're in the shelter because they already know which way the boat's going. And I was nervous because like, oh man, if they say lockdown now, I'm done. So I had to just, it was just timing and luck. I got lucky that, you know, that the sun was going down and that's when I went to the beach. I happened to catch Jeremy right then and then I said, Jeremy, they're all against you, bro. Everybody's coming after me. And I had to do that last minute because if he went to cross check it or cross reference it, it would have blew up in my face. And I said, Jeremy, there is no way I would be here talking to you right now if I wanted to see you gone. So the only reason I'm telling you that you're going to be gone is because I don't want you gone. So you have to believe me, you know? And, you know, again, he used his brain and he knows why would Tony be coming down here, stirring things up if it's really me that he wants gone. So if, the only reason I would try to trick Jeremy is because I'm trying to trick him because I want to get rid of him, right? Why else would I go trick him? Mm -hmm. 
right? So if I wanted you God, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. You right. know what I mean? So he, right. had to, he had to believe it, I guess, at that point. And then you went and told Nick and he told Michelle, right? Wait a minute. Um, how did I tell? Where did I tell Nick? Do you remember where I told I, him? I don't, I, I don't remember. I don't think we saw it on camera. No, it wasn't on camera. I, I, that I, it, it may have been. Uh, I, I think that wait, Jer- wait. Jeremy wait. talked to Michelle. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. I think they did show it. I went to, okay. at the water well. I told Nick. I said, Nick, do you want to make a big move? And then he's, and he's like, oh, let me think about it. And I was like, it would be a good move. And then he says, yeah, I'm in. And I was yeah. like, what? You're in? And that's right. So, yeah, so I talked to Nick about it. And then when I talked to Nick, I knew that we're good. Because once I tell Jeremy, Jeremy, you got to tell Michelle. Because I'm not going to go up to Michelle and tell her because she's not going to trust me. Or she might go blow up my game. Mm-hmm. And that's what. That's the thing with Michelle, too. Michelle was a player. She's a good player. So that's why I would try to leave her out of as much as I could. I, I didn't even want to use her as a number because I didn't trust her. Because if I told her Kim is going home or Sophie's going home, I was scared that she would go blow up my spot because she is a good player. She's good enough to go, you know, flip it on its head by blowing up my spot. So I would mm-hmm. never tell her nothing. I would just tell Jeremy. And she wouldn't even go against Jeremy because she had a real close bond with Jeremy, you know? Yeah. But with me, she didn't have a close bond. So it's easy for her to go against me and tell people. But with Jeremy, she wouldn't do that to Jeremy, you know? So that's why Jeremy says, did you talk to Michelle about it? I said, no, man, you got to go. He's like, what? I said, you got to go talk to her and do it now because we're about to leave. Yeah. And that's how that came to, you know, that's how that came about. It's a four, three, two vote, uh, a three way vote split. There's no idols played. Uh, this is just a, a, a beautiful, pure survivor move, Tony. Man, that, that was classic, man. I was, and again, everybody was so calm and cool at, at the camp because they thought everything was going smooth. And that's why it worked so beautifully. And that's why at Tribal, I was like, yeah, Jeff, we're all tired of running around. Sometimes you have nights like this where it's smooth. And that's another thing I did this game, Rob. Tribal councils, I did not look at the man. I never looked at Jeff. I would have my eyes, because Jeff, you, Jeff knows how to play the game. He knows what you're looking for. So in Kagayan, I would be like looking in his eyes. I'd be looking for him. Everywhere his eyes went, I was there, because I wanted to speak. I wanted to say something in Tribal. This time, every, way, every time he looked at me, I looked down. I looked away. I did not want him to talk to me, because I needed to be quiet and say as least as possible in the Tribals. I did, want, I did not want to look like the old Kagayan Tony talking in Tribals, with trickery and this and that and flashiness. I didn't want none of that. You know, Clapping, so I was, right. I didn't want none of that. <laughs> I was just trying to be as quiet as possible. So I was even playing Jeff Pros, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's smart. That's smart. Uh, and because he looks for you, you can tell. You can tell when he's ready to ask you a question. And you just, I just looked away. I was like, oh, man, I would just look away because because then he knows he's not going to get nothing good out of you. So he's yeah. not going to ask you a question, you know? Because he's like, he'll oh, say. Tony, oh, I know that uh, you are just jumping out of your seat. What do you have yeah, to say? Yeah, he did that in Kagan because I wanted that, you know. But this time mm. I was just quiet, man. I didn't want again. I didn't want no flashbacks, man. I didn't yeah. want to trick nothing, nothing from Kagan. This is something that I really want to know about. So Sophie gets voted out, and then for a week we talked about on the podcast. How is Sarah going to react to this? Because we talked about so much about your time in Kagiyan, where you did this on the odd numbers, you voted one way. Then on the even numbers, you flipped back. And a bunch of times that Trish had to go through a similar situation with you. Okay, Tony, don't do it again. Tony, yeah. don't do it again. And eventually it was Trish that got voted out. And I said, Sarah that she's she won't be able to get past this i i don't think she saw what happened in kagiyan but i was amazed that you guys were able to put this behind you well well here's the thing rob you know again i i try to think two three steps ahead right with the lj vote i knew i couldn't just blind i i knew i couldn't just blindside my whole alliance for no and just just wake up one day and say okay lj's gone so that's why i concocted this this lie about LJ was trying to get Wu out, was trying to break the promise. Remember I told LJ, I said, I don't know, I'm, I'm a little skeptical of Wu. And LJ says, okay, let's just vote him out. And I went back to everybody and said, well, LJ was going to vote Wu out. He was going to break his, he was going to break his promise to Wu. So he's going to do the same thing to us. So that's why when I do something like that, I can go back to them and say, listen, I did this for the best interest of us, you know? So the same thing with Sophie. I knew I had enough ammunition to explain to Sarah, Sarah, Sophie didn't tell me nothing about her idol, but yet she told me she was working with me and you, but she didn't tell me she told you. 
And I didn't want to tell Sophie you told me. So I had to keep that a secret, but Sophie didn't come to me. So how, how am I supposed to trust Sophie? Number one. Number two, you were right there sitting down on the log with her when she told the enemy that I was working with them to get rid of Jeremy. When you know I was working with Jeremy to protect you, Sarah. So, you know, like it was, and it makes sense to Sarah because it's the truth, you know? So this, this girl, Sophie, that was throwing me under the bus, wasn't trusting me enough to tell me about her idol, but she told you about the idol. So mm-hmm. is that fair for me, you know? And is it fair that she told the other alliance that I was working with, the fake alliance, that I was trying to get intel for, for both of us? Was that right that she told them that? So she was livid. She was so, she, they cut out a lot, man. Yeah. Her veins were popping out of her forehead. She was pulling, pulling on, my, on my water bottle. She slapped my bag off the shelter onto the floor. <laughs> She was screaming, I'm going to rocks. I don't care. I'm going to rocks. And then everybody was listening to this. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, because she was really mad. Yeah, it was real. It, it, no, no, I was legit. Yeah. She was angry. And she was legitimately saying, I'm going to rocks because at that point she didn't. And oh yeah. So when we first went to the merge and we reunited me and Sarah, I told Sarah, I said, Sandra is so grimy, you know, me and Sandra had a good rapport outside the game. We had a good bond, just like me and you. I would never do that to you, Sarah. And Sandra went and did it to me. She's so grimy. And then, and then Sarah, first thing she says, you're grimy. Grimy. You know, because I was calling Sandra grimy, you know? And, and it was like, so, so in her mind, she's like, Sandra tried to do to you what you're trying to do to me. And I was like, oh, no, please. It's not like that, Sarah. Please believe me, you know? And honestly, I would never have turned my back on Sandra or Sarah. Because we talked outside the game. And outside the game, when I tell somebody something, it's, it's real. I couldn't, I would have lost my game for any of those two because I would have never betrayed them. Never. Yeah. I had wondered, uh, I was talking with Sophie uh, a couple of days ago, and we were talking about how that, you know, she, that she had been saying that she got the impression from Sarah, like, hey, if you ever make a move on Tony, I just don't <laughs> want to, I just don't want to know about it. And she wondered if that Sarah had said anything to you about how if, if you ever want to vote out Sophie, just leave me out of it. I don't want to no. know about it. No, 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 no. Sarah and Sophie were, were tight, really yeah. tight. You know, they, they, they were BFFs out there, you know? Um, so yes, Sarah, we never had that discussion with Sophie. You know, she always just told me, Tony, we're good. Sophie has the idol. If she needs it, we're good, we're good, we're good. And that's how it always was until Sophie, you know, did that with, uh, with, telling Jeremy and I mean, telling Michelle and Kim mm-hmm. about how I was playing Jeremy, you know, and that's when it turned it all around for me. And that's, but I mean, all along though, all along, it was, she, it was clear as day that Sophie was, was killing it out there, man. Yeah. She was, she, she was just so confident in who she talked to, the way she carried herself, the way she was making decisions, the way she just set out her name and let's go for this. She was like powerful, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and I was like, Oh man, she's, she's, she's no joke. You know, she was yeah. really good. And, and, we, and the challenges, you guys, we didn't see it on TV. The challenges, like the reward challenges that they wiped out because of the edge, she was, <laughs> she was like, when she was solving puzzles, like, ah, ah, boom, and walking <laughs> away like, oh. <laughs> yeah. She was running the show, man. She's good. She was, you know, She's and good. everybody was seeing it and everybody was talking about it. But she yeah. was in a clique where she was powerful. She was in the majority. So yeah. she was protected. Now, after this, Sarah doesn't have a, really another option. Uh, basically, Sarah has all of her, you know, uh, chips with you at this point. And so this is now, uh, you know, this super tight bond, really, that you have to worry about Kim now, who is now really trying to, you know, uh, bring a lot of uh, people together. So finally, she's saying that we, Tony has to go. Yeah. So, so again, with the, with the Sophie blindside, blindside and Sarah, again, that's something I thought about too. I was like, if Sophie goes, Sarah's going to be mad at me, but she's not going to go to the other alliance and be on the bottom of that. Yeah. She's always going to stay on top. She's going to be on top with me without Sophie, but she's always going to be on top. So she, I, and I knew Sarah again, from outside the game, I knew she wouldn't just disown me because I did that move because I had reasons to make that move. It's not like I just woke up one morning and said, let me just get rid of Sophie. So again, from what I explained to you, so that's another reason why I knew Sarah would not go to the other side because she would be on the bottom of the other team. Uh, she did say, let's go to rocks. She was very angry. And she was like, I don't care. We'll split mm-hmm. right down the middle. We'll go to rocks. But uh, so now Kim, again, I could have sworn I was, like I said, I was, unless I was hallucinating, I could see, this is what happened too with the spine nest. There was a lot of times I would run up to the spine nest and the producers wouldn't be there. 
they wouldn't be there waiting because there was just one following the two people that are talking going to the to the well. So I would be up there and they would never pan up. So they would never have any footage of me being up there, you know? Mm -hmm. So I talked to them. I said, guys, you know, how am I going to tell you? Because sometimes I'll be out there peeing in the water and then I'll just decide to, because, you know, when you're peeing in the ocean, they're not following you. Mm -hmm. And that's all the way in the back where you'd go to the bathroom. So that's where the well was. So I would just nonchalantly walk there and just climb up my tree and just chill without the production knowing. So the next day when I had a conversation with them, they rigged the whole tree with GoPros. Yeah. There was GoPros that, yeah, they, they had it all set up. Every branch I was stepping on, a GoPro would break, you know, <laughs> black tape that they wrapped the GoPro on. So, yeah. and, you know, that's fine. It's on TV. It looks like there was no work involved. But I had to cut. So at night, I would make fires at the well, and I would be chopping down, uh, you know, whatever those branches are. With the, They weren't palm fronds. They were just branches with leaves. I would be chopping them down because every single time I used it up there, they would start breaking and, and wilting, you know, with the sun. So I would have to chop new ones down every day. I would have to work and build the spine nest because, you know, uh, where I was covering myself, you can see me if I didn't put a bunch of uh, reinforcements there. But those reinforcements would wilt and they would fall. They would drop every time I climbed up it. So it was a lot of work to put that thing together. Yeah. So how did you get the palm fronds into the tree? You would climb the tree with them or you would throw them up there? No, no. So, so I would go with a machete at night. So I had a fire kit and my machete. I would, get, I would have a basket full of my fire kit and a machete. Yeah. And I would just run down the beach, you know? And, that's an, oh, and, and you see, so another thing, those little subtle things that I was telling you about throughout the whole game, my bandana. I wore it like a little Greek old lady. You know how the Greek ladies wear the veils? You mm -hmm. know? Yes, yes. I would wear my bandana like that so I don't look threatening, you know? And when I would run, I would run like, a, like, like, like you know, like hopping. Like when I would run, look like a, like a cartoon character running. Yes. All those little things, you just make it. You did that on purpose. You, ru you ran intentionally in a, in a silly way. Of course. I don't yeah, run, of like, course. I, well, I run when I chase somebody in the streets. <laughs> yeah. You think um, that's how I run? I, I don't know. I never thought about this. I never but, thought. So that, that's why I, I would, like when I'm running, I'm running like, like sideways, like just like a character. Like, cause that's that to people, they look at you and they're like, oh man, this guy's a joke, you know? But you know, like all those little things, man, yeah. it just, it just psycho psychologically just, can you talk a little bit more about this? Because of that I, I've, uh, you know, read where you've talked about in other interviews about how you used uh, body language to oh, yeah. disguise yourself. Can you talk about that, that and how you learned about that? Well, the same thing. Well, yeah. I mean, we, we learn in the, in the police academy, you learn verbal judo. You learn how to fight with your mouth, right? You, you learn body language. You, you always want to be on a higher, you know, when, you, when you're talking down, when you're talking to somebody, you want to be authoritative. So you have to look more authoritative. You can't be... Like, like you can't be like this and you're looking at people, oh, you're under arrest. You can't do that. You know, mm -hmm. you gotta be on the high ground. So, so in the game, I would always walk on the lower side of the sand. You know, I would be looking at people. I would slouch my shoulders down. I would, I would hold my hands. Like I would hold my hands like this all the time. I'm standing still yeah. instead of like this, like I wasn't caught in hand. Yes. You know, like, if you're listening to the podcast, Tony is fol folding his arms, uh, versus like, uh, holding his, uh, you know, uh, his arms in front of him. Yeah, you know, but like little things, slouching shoulders, you know, your shoulders yeah. slouch down. You know, again, when when I'm when I'm running, I'm running like 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 a clown. You know, like all those little yeah. things, man. Because it, you just diminish your threat level. You know, you just make people look at you like, oh yeah, you know, you're not threatening. But you talked about how in Kagiyan you you carried yourself a certain way. Uh, did you? What made you think about changing this from that game to this game? Well, Kagiyan, nobody knew me. Yeah. You know, me so I could go in there and, and be this aggressive beast that I was, you know, I didn't care about cutting throats. I didn't care about blindsiding people in your face type of thing because they didn't know me. So they only knew what I told them and I could lie to them all the time. They didn't know that mm -hmm. this time I couldn't do that. They, they, they know me. So they, they, there's no way I could have triggered back to the, to the old Kage Antonio because they know that, okay, this guy, he means business. He knows what he's doing. This time I had to make it look like I don't know what I'm doing. You know, you guys are winners. You're much better than me. And I, oh, I overestimated every single one of them there. I really did. I, I wanted to overestimate them. You guys are all better than me. And I made myself believe that they're all better than me. So I was, in my mind, I'm trying to fight acting from the bottom. So I have to scrap and do this when all along I was really on the top. But I play like I'm on the bottom. You have to. I yeah. mean, I have to do that. 
you put so much mental preparation into every conversation that you have uh, that I, I would love to hear a little bit about what, what is your physical preparation like to go back and play survivor? Because, you know, I, I've seen pictures of you, uh, younger Tony and you're huge. Uh, what do you do? So, you know, you know, your way around the, the weight room. If you need, if you need to, what do you do to get ready for survivor? So, so my first season, uh, in Cagayan, I was, I was really muscular before I went on the show. When I was prepping for the show, I put on a lot of fat around the muscle because I kept eating the peanut butters and the salmon yeah. and the avocados. I was putting the good fats on me. So I gained a lot of weight, of fat weight, and that propelled me through the game and gave me the energy that I needed. Yes. This time around, I didn't, I, in this Winners of War, I didn't do no preparation. I didn't eat more. I didn't work out. I didn't do nothing. I went in there like 170 and I came out of there 140, you know, mm -hmm. I was, I was hurting this time. I was hurt bad, but you know, it wouldn't show, you know, I just kept grinding. I just kept going. Uh, I think from like maybe day 29, 28, I was running on fumes and on adrenaline. It was no yeah. energy. It was just straight up adrenaline that kept me going and going and going. Because again, every single night, Rob, every night, that maybe there was one or two nights out of 39 days that I slept that night. All the other nights I was out doing, I made fake idols. We'll get into that later on, I guess. Yeah. But uh, I was, okay. every night I was out. Okay. So Kim is getting people together to vote, to vote against you, but you have an idol. You're going to win immunity. It ultimately isn't going to be uh, a big threat for you. But at what point did you start to realize that uh, people are trying to potentially vote against you this round? Well, when, when, again, I think this is when I was already listening to Kim talk to uh, Nick. Um, again, allegedly. Like, yeah, allegedly, right? Because yeah. I confronted Kim on the beach. And I said, hey, Kim, do you hear anybody throwing my... Because right after that tree, that's why I keep thinking that it was legit. If you ever talk to Kim, please yeah. ask her if she ever talked to Nick under the well about getting me out. Well, we right? saw in the episode that she's talking with Nick about it at the time, but I, the, I feel like that, that was by the show. That was like on yeah, the bench. Was a, yeah, that yeah. wasn't at the well when she was talking. So if that was the only time she talked to him, then I don't know, man. But I remember I came from my spy nest and I confronted Kim on the beach. Please ask her if she remembers this. Yeah. And I said, hey, Kim, do you hear anybody throwing my name out there? She's like, no, I don't hear your name. And, you know, she's picking up the shells and she doesn't want to look at me. And, and I'm like, Kim, you know, we're together. She's like, yeah, Tony, I told you we're together. And she's picking up the shells and she looks so nervous. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then she, she knew, like, I, she, I think she read me. She knew that I wasn't believing her for whatever reason. Right. Because later on she comes and she tells me she has an idol. She's like, Tony, I just want to let you know that I have an idol. And I said, really? You know, I already knew days before. So I played it off like I didn't know. I was like, oh, Kim, I, when did you find it? She's like, oh, I found it way back in the car. I said, oh, my God, and you held the secret so long? So I'm just playing along with it, right? And then I say, I say okay, Kim, um, did you tell anybody else? She, she said, no, I told Nick. I said, oh, you told Nick before me? I thought we were working together. You know, mm -hmm. I was playing it off like I was hurt, you know, to make it look like so she can really believe that I really trust her, you know? But at that point, I already knew she was talking about getting rid of me. So, so it, it, it was... Hold on, hold on. This was before she played the idol. Yes, yes. This yes. Was before she played the idol. That's right. Okay. That's right. You know what? See, it's crazy. So I already knew. Here. I already knew that she was trying to get rid of me from the spy nest before that. Because, and then that's how me and Nick try to flush her idol out. And that's when I felt I, I, I felt for Nick again, saying that okay, so Nick is working with me again. He's telling me about um, Kim and everything. There's just so much going on, man. There's a lot going yeah. on. Um, so this is. Uh, also when, uh, you and Ben are going to go out and look for the idol and Ben finds the idol in front of you and then tries to pocket it and you catch him. Is that Sophie's idol? That was Sophie's, Sophie's idol. idol. Yes. yes. So that's the thing. So, so again, I told Nick about the idol and then Sophie announces it at tribal with an idol in my pocket. So now everybody knows about it, but I was, it was only supposed to be me, Sarah, and then Nick, you know, cause I told Nick about the idol. You know, as far as I knew, but Sophie already had told Kim, I believe, about the idol, right? Because she split it with her or something. Mm -hmm. No, Kim split her. I don't know who knew about it, but I just know. Yes, yeah, Sophie that. knew about Kim's idol. Okay, so, so Sarah knew about Sophie's, and then Sarah yeah. told me, so I knew about it, and then I told Nick, and then I said, let's get rid of it. And that was another reason, too, and I told Sarah, I said, Sarah, and Sophie had the idol, now we can go find it. But when she announced it, when she announced it, I was like, oh, man. So then, yeah, so then Ben went out there looking. But I'm talking, you know, when we were walking the trail, I'm talking with Ben. I'm trying to feel him out, like what's going on, Ben. You know, like, cause you know, he he was he wasn't that close with me yet. You know, 
Yeah. So, so as I'm talking to him, he's just poking his hand in every hole. And we're just walking the trail. And then <laughs> and I'm right there and I'm watching him and he's like, he's like, and he, and he's like, mm-hmm. yeah. And I t- I, I say, hey, Ben, I'm, I'm right here. I'm looking at you, man. Yeah. And, and, and to me, I was like, what's the matter with you? So at that point, you know, I made a scene and they didn't show it too, but he was like, okay, so, so if you want me to trust you, I'll trust you, but give me your idol. He told give me, me your idol. Yeah, because yeah. he knew I had an idol. And he's like, give me your idol. If, if you trust, because I said, Ben, you don't trust me, man. He's like, I don't know, Tony. You just pulled some craziness. You know, you just pulled. I said, Ben, that's history. He's like, that was just four hours ago, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was yeah. like, it, it's history. That's gone. Let's move on. Yeah. So then later, later before he carried me and, and ran down the jungle with me, he wanted my idol. He's like, yo, Tony, he says, all right. So if you want me to trust you, then you give me your idol. Let me hold on to your idol. I said, what? I said, no, I don't trust you, Ben. So then I started walking away from him and he, and he pulled me back. He's like, all right, Tony, I'm sorry. I just got a little paranoid. I'm not used to finding idols with people. And, and that was another thing with Ben. Ben, he's a sweetheart. The guy's a sweetheart, right? Yeah. So, so when, he, when he knows that you, you want to work with him and you want to be with him, like there was a lot of, you know, like I don't want to fast forward to when he, you know, he laid down for, he, you know, he laid on the sword for Sarah. But him, he, he's, um, yeah, man, I don't know how, how to, to me, so th- this is how I, I, I see how Ben is, right? Ben, he, he, he wanted, he, not that he wanted to be loved, but he wanted to be trusted and he wanted to trust somebody. So when he found that in, later on in the game in Denise and Sarah and in me, there was no way, there was no way he would do anything to get rid of us. There was no way he would want to hurt us. So in his mind, like he's saying to himself, I really can't do anything. You know, I, what am I going to do to these people? I can't do nothing to them. And that's why I think he did what he did later on, but I'm, I'm jumping again. So we're mm-hmm. back to the jungle. Yes, I, I, I caught him finding the idol. And then we, and that right there, I think, is when we really bonded because I was like, listen, Ben, I'm not going to blow up your spot because I could have just easily pretended I didn't see you put the idol in your pocket. I could have went back and told everybody, Ben has an idol. Let's get rid of him. He was trying to hide it. That's not the case. I want to work with you, which is exactly what I did with Cass and Kaga. Yeah, hey, Cass, who told me you guys were plotting against me to get rid of me? The only reason I'm telling you this is because I trust you and I want to get to the end with you. And then she runs back and tells Wu, you know, which I didn't agree with, you know, like, well, why would you mm-hmm. tell Wu? I'm telling you I want to work with you unless you didn't want to work with me. That's different. Then. But that's the same thing with Ben. Hey, Ben, if I didn't trust you and I didn't want to work with you, I wouldn't have said nothing to you. I would have just went back and we would have got rid of you. So yeah. that's when we formed that, that really close bond. And according to him, we got married that day. He ran down the jungle. With him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And again, I, I looked like a little, like a little toothpick when he was carrying me running down there. <laughs> yeah. So um, then you guys are going to have your uh, immunity challenge when you win your third straight immunity uh, win here, uh, where ultimately you're going to make that deal with Nick uh, that you're going to give him a fire token if uh, he's going to give up and you don't care about fire tokens. Hell no. I was like, you know what? I was like, Nick, if you win, you're going to get two tokens. So why do you want one for me? You know? Mm-hmm. So, because first, first he was trying to get me down. He was telling me, because later on he said, Tony, I knew they were coming after you. So I wanted to help you. That's why. But I was like, Nick, but you told me that if I, that you'll give me a token to step down. I don't, did they even show that? I don't know if they showed that. Yeah, they did. So, so yeah, I'm like, Nick, you told me I, if I would have said, yeah, I'll step down for a token. Then you would, I wouldn't have one immunity. So how were you helping me? So I didn't believe him at that point, mm-hmm. you know, but later yeah. on outside the game, he was telling me, yeah, Tony, I didn't know. So he's not going to lie. He's not going to be lying to me outside the game, you know? So, yeah. but at that point I didn't care. I was like, nah, cause I still, I think I still had more in me, you know? So I told him, I said, nah, Nick, I, I just want to, I just want to try to see if I can win again. Yes. So then when he says, you'll give me a token before he wanted it, before he can change his mind. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll give you a token. Go, go step down. I'll give you a token. Cause I didn't care. Especially if I'm a win two right now, I'm going to pay him one and I still have a token, mm-hmm. you know? So I absolutely jumped on that. Yeah. You also caught him when he, you had asked him about how, uh, Hey, have, has, have you heard my name from anybody <laughs> after Ben had already talked to you about, uh, that, okay, that Kim is working with trying to get Nick to on board with this plan. See, that's another thing too. I don't remember the, the time slot. How it was, was that after I already talked to Kim on the beach, you know, like I, I you know, like it's hard, it's hard to remember. Yeah. I'm you, I thought I heard them talking up there. I confronted Kim on the beach where she was telling me, no, no, I didn't hear your name. When in fact it was confirmed later by Nick and Ben that she was throwing my name out there. So I knew she was lying. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so yeah. So when I talked to Nick again, I wanted so hard to work with Nick, you know, I wanted so hard to work with Nick. I really wanted to get to the end with Nick. 
Nick and Sarah. I really wanted to get at that point. I really wanted to get to the end with them. So when Nick is, and you know, I'm not going to be in his face. You're lying to me. You're lying to me. You can't do mm-hmm. that, you know, because right. he's, you know, you're going to push him against you. So I was like, come on, Nick, you know, it's all right, man. Just let me know if you heard anything. You know, I was being really low. I was being passive. Yeah. Just, you know. And uh, so that's when I was like, oh, man, they are throwing my name out there. And what was the issue is he felt like I can't beat Tony, right? That's, that's, that's what I said in my confessionals. And yeah. my confessionals, I was saying, you know, I want to get to the end with Nick, but Nick, I don't think Nick would want to get to the end with me because I don't think he probably thinks he can beat me. You know, so I would be like that. So yeah, Nick and Nick, you know, see, the thing was, I think that all of them waited a little bit too long to try to make a move because at that point I was locked in with Sarah. I was locked in with Ben. I was locked in with Denise. You know, I was locked in with, with uh, Jeremy too, you know? So like Nick to try to make a move against me, it would hurt him for him to go talk, talk like it did with Kim, you know, like Kim was talking to people about me mm-hmm. and they were like, Oh man, you know, but they were, she was talking to my people. Yeah. Yeah. So at this point, it's uh, Kim is going to switch from going after you to say, okay, finally, let's take out Jeremy here at, at this vote. Uh, and you're going to go to work again to try to save Jeremy. Yeah. I, I didn't know. I didn't know why she, she did that. I, I mean, uh, but then again, that goes back to Sarah's social game. Yeah. She put such a bond with Kim because Kim's move right there was to get rid of Sarah. Yes. I, I talked to Kim and Kim said that she said that she felt like that, you know, she f- just felt like, Oh, you know, I can still, you know, try to salvage things with Sarah and get, ba- and get back together with Sarah. But that was, uh, the, be- that would have been the better move to go and, and try to yeah, and just I, take I mean, Sarah out. Because at one point you work with Jeremy, the next point you're not working. You know what I mean? Like, I, 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 I don't know, but again, who knows what would have happened, but yeah, so I didn't, I didn't know how that happened. So that's when, is that when uh, we told that's okay. So what was the question again? So, uh, he had the, uh, 50, 50 coin, uh, from Michelle, you were going to work on, uh, getting the votes onto Kim. If you can get, you know, uh, Ben and Jeremy and Nick, and you have to get, uh, Ben and Jeremy voting in the same direction, which is not going to be easy, but ultimately you get five votes to go on Kim. All right. So with that vote, this is what happened. That, 100%, if anybody had any doubts that nothing changes in tribal council, we went into that tribal council without the numbers. I went into that tribal council without the numbers to get rid of Kim. It was all along. I told Ben, I begged Ben. Ben wanted Jeremy Gunn. Ben, please, Ben. I mean, they showed a little bit of the begging, but mm-hmm. I was like, please, just do this for me and whatever you want the next one. But please, I heard Kim talking my name. You even told me she was talking my name. Please, Ben, this will make me feel very comfortable and I'll do whatever you want next. And that's when he said, okay, who are your numbers? I said, it's me, it's you, and it's Sarah. So that's me, Sarah. So that's four of us, right? Yeah. We, didn't have no, we had nobody else, but I had an idol. So I told Ben, if I, he's like, Tom, we don't have the numbers going into that. I said, okay, if I have to play my idol, I'll play my idol. But please just say yes. And again, I didn't want to go tell Nick anything during the game. So I was waiting for the last minute to flip Nick's vote at Tribal. So what I started doing at that Tribal, I started talking in everybody's ear, but I wasn't saying nothing. I was like, are we good? You know, but they don't know what I'm saying. So I'm trying to make everybody nervous. I went to Kim and I said, Kim, Kim, what's going on? Is anybody changing the I'm still good. And then I go to Nick and I said, Nick, Kim was saying that you were trying to get me out. That's what I told Nick in his ear. I said, Kim is telling me that you were trying to get me out. Yeah. And he's like, no. I was like, yes, you're saying you and her. Because I know for a fact, because Ben told me that Nick and Kim were talking. I thought I heard them on the tree, but whatever, that's God. Yes, that's- so, so I know for a fact, so I can tell that to Nick and say, hey, Nick, Kim is telling me you were trying to get me out today, man. You were throwing my name out there before I won the immunity. So Nick's like, no, I didn't say that. I said, well, that's what Kim is doing. Let's just get rid of Kim. So I'm talking to everybody's here, just making it all crazy. And Nick flipped his vote right there in that tribal because of the chirping at tribal council that night. And I didn't mm-hmm. have to play an idol because I would have played an idol to get us the numbers, you know? Yeah. But, but once I convinced, I didn't convince Nick, but I just said, Nick, please vote with us. This girl's trying to cause trouble. She's telling me that you're trying to get me out. I don't believe her. And then, you know, everybody gets nervous because they don't know what you're whispering and everybody's here. So they took the safest route and he, and he voted for Kim, which was like, oh my God. And again, yeah. I'm protected. So I don't care. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me. I'm still safe. I don't care. Yeah. You know? Tony, do you like all the whispering at tribal council? Do you feel like that it adds to the game? I feel like that you were, you were able to use it effectively. Uh, a lot of the fans don't like it. 
Yeah, I mean, as a fan watching it, when you don't, when it's like you're, you're, you know, you're, you're just watching nothing. You don't know what's going mm-hmm. on. So yeah. I, I don't like it as a fan, but, but you need it as a tool. It's one of your tools that you have at Tribal. You cause the paranoia. Everybody's trepping. You have no idea what's going on. I don't care because I had the protection. So, but I know everybody else was nervous. So that's why, you know, and I changed that vote with Nick. If you get a chance to talk with Nick, ask Nick. Because when we went in there, I didn't have the numbers to get rid of Kim. Ben said he'll do it. I begged him and he says, okay, Tony, I'll do it. Uh, Sarah was going to do it with me. I was going to do it. So, and Jeremy. So then with Nick, the last second with Nick, that's what made that happen. And that only happened at tribal council because mm-hmm. we did not go in there with numbers. I took a big risk. Yeah. Okay. So Kim is out and now this is ultimately going to be a vote where there's some talk of voting out Nick here. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Let me rewind just a little bit. When Michelle gave Jeremy that 50 50 coin, before Michelle gave him the 50 50, I had no idea about it. I gave my idol to Jeremy. Okay. Nobody oh. saw that. I went up to Jeremy. I said, Jeremy, I got your back, bro. If they're coming after you, I'm giving you the idol. I'm going to give you the idol now. And I gave it to him. And then later on, I found out that Michelle was going to give him the 50 50. I went up to Jeremy and said, Jeremy, let me get that idol back, bro. You got the protection from Michelle. I got your back. If I have to use this at the tribal, I will. So he gave it back to me. You know, I told him, I, you're safe 100%. I got yeah. your back. So, so that's an other little thing that in Jeremy's mind is, okay, Tony's a good dude. He's, he's, he's got my back 100%. And those little things that they don't show, that's why fans will be like, why is Jeremy listening to this guy? Why is he believing this guy? That's why. All those little things. It's not like Jeremy doesn't know how to play the game. He's believing whoever, you know, whoever's there. And it's another thing to trust somebody and another thing to believe somebody. They didn't trust me. Nobody trusted me. Jeremy didn't trust me. Kim didn't trust me. But when, Nick didn't trust me. But when it came time for the votes, all they had to do was believe in me for that vote. And that's what yeah. I was looking for. And I would tell them, don't trust me, but just believe me for this night. If Michelle didn't give him the 50-50 coin, would you have let him take your idol into tribal council? Oh, Yes. What if he yes. played it? What if he played it for himself? If he played it, Kim goes home. Yeah. You know, if, if he was with me, like I thought he was, you know? Mm-hmm. So that yeah. was the whole thing. I wanted Kim gone and I would have given him the idol, throw all the votes on Jeremy, get, you know, Kim's going. You offered to play your idol on Sarah at that tribal council. And she said, no, no, don't use it. Was, would you have actually done it? Or if she said, yeah, no, you actually play it. Would you have, would you have talked her out of it? 100% I would have gave it to her. Yeah. At, at that time. Yeah. 100%. That was, that was real. That was true emotion. Sarah, I got you. Here's the idol. Use it. Was that a make good for the Sophie vote? Well, absolutely. Because yeah. when, 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 Sarah, when, when Sarah got blindsided with the, with the Sophie vote, she thought, that's it. Her game is over. She, 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 she's done this and that. I said, Sarah, I got your back. I got your back. I have an idol. And she was, you know, and I said, I'll use it for you. If you're ever, if you ever need any help. Cause I felt bad. I put in a bad spot, you know? And I told her, I'll play it for you. And that spot was one of those spots where she could have went home. And, yeah. I, and, and that's, man, I, I, I'll tell you, man, Sarah got, she's got more nerve and she's way braver than I am, man. Because mm-hmm. even with the fire, she's like, I don't care. I'll go up the best. Let's go. I'll, I'll take Tony out. I would never offer myself. No way. I, I want to I go up against somebody I know I could beat. Give me that 99-year-old person that I could arm wrestle and beat him. I don't yeah. want that young lad that's going to beat me, you know? Yeah. And she's like, I don't care. I'll go up against him with that, with the idol. She's like, no, I don't want your idol. What? If you, mm-hmm. even if I know I'm safe, if somebody wants to play an idol for me, sure. oh, please play it for me. Yeah. yeah that's, I don't know, man. That That's crazy. Yeah. After the Sophie vote, uh, she said, look, uh, I'll forgive you. But if we, you know, if I, when I get voted out, if I get voted out because of this, then I'm never talking to you again oh, yeah. uh, for the rest yeah. of my life. Our, our friendship yeah. is over. Um, I, I just was curious, how, how close are you guys in real life? I mean, like close as what? I mean, she, she lives where she lives. I live here. I've never seen her outside of Cagayan. I've never met with her again. Yeah. But we'll call each other once in the blue or we'll say something, you know, reminds us of something. We'll text each other. You know, yeah. I'll send a picture of my kid's birthday. She'll send me, a, you know, like that. But, but it doesn't, you don't have to be with somebody consistently to be close. You know, we, we have chemistry is huge too. You know, yeah. like me and Trish had a great chemistry, you know, like it, it doesn't matter. I talk to Trish now once a year or whatever, but the chemistry is so strong that when we talk, it's like, we always talk, you know, 
And that's mm-hmm. how me and Sarah are. So, yeah. so when she told me that, you know, like, I'm not thinking, oh man, outside the game, you're not going to talk to me ever again and I'm going to be hurt. But in the game, I was devastated to hear that. I, I tell you this season, man, the emotions that we were all broken, man. You know, you, it, it, you wouldn't be able to tell how we were just moving around. But we were, I mean, towards the end, you've seen, you know, how, how Denise was like, that's enough. You know, I'm done. You know, yeah. like, you know man, it was, it was tough this season, man. What you was know? it? I think it's, I think it's a lot to do with, we all know each other. I think that because I, I know these people from TV. I know they all have families now. I've seen them and it hurts because it's like more personal to like blindside somebody, you know? So it's hard when you're telling somebody, you know, I'm with you and then you, you want to try to get them out. I, I don't know, man. And, mm-hmm. and me, I was broken because I wasn't, I didn't have no food. I had no body fat on me. So I was just, I was crying all the time, man. They didn't show it. Yeah. I was crying. Every confessional, I was crying. Why did I leave my kids? You know, why, how am I, why am I doing this? This sucks. I'll never do this again. We were broken, man. All of us. And we cried all the, Kim, me and Kim would cry all the time. Every time she would come from a confessional, her eyes were red. I would come, my eyes were red the whole time. Because they, yeah. would just, they would just poke at you. They would just poke at you. So, so what do you think your kids are doing home now? I don't care what they're doing home right now. Let's talk about the game, you know? And they would just, man, it was crazy. Yeah. Crazy. So ultimately, you guys are going to talk. I think it's Sarah has an idea of, okay, we, the, let's, let's get Nick voted out. Uh, and then uh, she wants to plant the seed for, to Ben, right? Uh, and then Ben ultimately uh, says to you, uh, like, Hey, I think we should vote Nick out. Uh, you're like, Oh, I think that's a good idea if you, if you say so, Ben. Uh, but Nick's going to win immunity. <laughs> that's right. That that's the, the, the sliding puzzle of my nemesis, right? Yes. Yes. That's but but I, I thought you were going to win it. Jeff is like, Tony, this slide puzzle, you're doing so much better than in Kagiyan where you were just like a, like yeah, a yeah, lunatic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. R- right <laughs> i was going yeah i was going really slow i was looking at it i try to learn from my mistakes right so i'm going slow and i'm trying to look at the big picture but nick rocked it you know nick rocked it so so that's um yeah so that's right so so ben wanted to get see ben wanted jeremy out the whole time yeah but then we formed an alliance me ben uh uh sarah and jeremy we formed the real alliance at that point too it was like it was like it was real but I wanted it to be fake with Jeremy's rest of his people. Yeah. At that moment, moment, at that, man, I can't say moment. I don't want to make you self-conscious, Tony. Moment, moment. Yeah. Moment. At that moment, we were really were trying to stay strong. You know, me, Ben, Sarah, and Jeremy, we were like, all right, you know, two cops, the firemen, the military guy, that would be amazing to just go through through the game. But then I don't know what happened. They, they just, it just, they just kept clashing. So ben, ben and Jeremy. Yeah. If you would have voted Nick out there, how far would uh, Jeremy have gotten in the plans? Would he have gone next? I, I, I have no idea. You just, again, you, you don't know how, what one hour brings in that game, you know? Mm-hmm. So I have no idea, but I know ultimately Jeremy was no way he could go to the final four. I yeah. yeah. You're playing with fire. Cause he's getting close. Yeah. He was getting close. Yeah. Yeah. He's right there. And so, yeah, so yeah. U- ultimately, uh, you guys are going to decide, okay, let's split the votes on Jeremy and Michelle here. And then, um, Michelle is going to use her coin, but, uh, ultimately it's going to, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be Jeremy. But Jeremy seemed very, uh, upset with you. He's, I, I think he even said bad move, bro. Yeah. See the thing with, with Jeremy, uh, um, he said bad move for everything we did. Yeah. You know? and that's what I used against him all the time. When we got rid of Wendell, bad move guys. We, when Tyson went home, it's a bad move, guys. And I would mm-hmm. tell him, listen, everything we do is a bad move. So I was always pitting everybody against Jeremy, but at the same time, I was protecting Jeremy. You know what I mean? So I made it look to my real alliance that I, that I didn't want to work with Jeremy at all. And I made it look with Jeremy that they wanted him out, you know? And I was, you know, Jeremy, they keep saying you're saying bad move. They keep saying bad move. But yeah, so everything, you know, he kept saying bad. Like even when he wanted, um, with the Wendell thing, again, he's like, guys, it's a bad move. Don't get rid of him. Guys, don't get rid of Tyson. It's a bad move. So, and ultimately the game kept going on and on and on. And again, when we voted him out, he said, bad move, my dude, bad move. And, and I got it, man. I know he was hurt, man, because we were really close, man. Yeah. It was, you know, we were really close. You know, at, at some points, the closeness, I really wanted to be with him. But again, I, you know, my heart yeah. wanted to be with him. But my brain was like, no way, you can't. You yeah. Know? 
And you guys did have a, a lot of fun uh, moments on the show. The 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 thing with the calendar was uh, probably the most hilarious thing in the whole season of uh, seven days in a week versus five days in a week. And it seems like that you guys have a good natured friendship outside of the game on uh, on Twitter. That, that did you need to have a conversation with him after the game to get back to that place where you guys could be good again? No, no, no. Right, right, right. As soon as that same night, that same night when we went to the Ponderosa after the game was over, you know, he came to me, gave me a big hug. He said, Tony, you killed the game. Good game. You know, I said, yo, did you vote for me, Jeremy? He said, man, I'm, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. I had to vote for that. You know, he said, that's yeah. my family. I said, 100%. Because if Sarah was up there, I don't care who she was up against, I'm voting for Sarah. So yeah. I understood that. So I hadn't, it, it was not because he's bitter. Because I, I seen some yeah. people on Twitter saying, oh, Jeremy was bitter. He didn't vote for you. So, you know, I get it 100%. But there was so much me and me and Jeremy would just constantly be doing this, everything. So me and Jeremy were like how me and uh, uh, who Spencer, was it? me and Spencer and Kagan and yeah. me and Caleb were on game changers because me and Caleb when we got voted he's out, he's no thoroughbred. We, yeah, oh no, he's not a thoroughbred. That's right, we're Malcolm. <laughs> we oh man, me and Caleb, everything was a competition. So me and Jeremy, everything was a competition. We would, but again, I would purposely like. Not, I mean, I sucked at a lot of things we did, but I would deliberately not try to win, you know, not, not 100% win. Cause I wanted just to keep building that. Like, all right, I suck. I suck at this. I suck at that. I suck at this, but then I'm winning immunities. And then again, I got to play it off. Like, Oh my God, how the heck did I win immunity? I never win immunities, you know? Mm -hmm. So me and Jeremy, we just had a lot of good times. We had a lot of good talks. We had a lot of real life talks, you know, a lot, a lot of real close, you know, heart to heart talks, man. And you know, again, Everybody that you talk to, I can guarantee you will say they love Jeremy because he's that guy, you know? Yeah. So ultimately, um, this is going to be uh, where you guys get rid of Nick uh, at the final six. It's finally time to cut ties with Nick. But there's a lot of stuff going on here. First, Michelle is, you know, really trying to push with uh, Sarah. She's just to Sarah, like, hey, just so you know, I'm, Tony's going to win. He's, run, he's running this game. Uh, and is this the first time that you really had to deal with people having that kind of talk around camp of like, Hey, everybody, just so you know, Tony will win if he gets to the end. That, that's, that's exactly what happened. And I left a confessional saying, okay, this whole game, I was that blind spot where people know how dangerous I can be, but they just don't pay any mind to me. You know, like when you're driving a car, it takes one second just to look to your left before you turn that lane, but mm -hmm. nobody wants to do it. Nobody just wants to do it. They just rather just turn the lane. Right. And I was saying to my confession, I was like, I'm that blind spot that nobody wants to look. And now Michelle is forcing them to look, you know, because Sarah came back to us and she said, yo, she says, she says, Mich we got to get rid of Michelle. She's over here trying to start up trouble. She's trying to say that Tony's running the show, trying to pit everybody against us. And yeah, so, so in everybody's mind, they're, they're playing that game as hard as they're playing it, you know? So that, I mean, you got to think that Michelle just throwing that out there just to stir something up because nobody wanted to work with Michelle, you know, we wanted to get her out. So you got to think. You're not looking at it like, oh, she's legit. She's definitely saying she means what she's saying. You're looking at it like, oh, she's trying to stir stuff up. Let's just get rid of her. Because that's the first thing that comes to your mind without thinking deeper. And it's hard, man. And that point of the game is hard to think deeper and deeper. It's hard unless you're sitting by yourself at night where you have nothing else going around you but your thoughts, you know? And that's mm -hmm. what happens. Yeah. So, so the Michelle thing, Ben caught Nick putting tokens in Michelle's. Um, Michelle's shoe or vice versa. It was one of those. And Ben was like, Tone, go look in that shoe. I bet you there's tokens in that shoe. And I was like, wait, man, I'm not taking nobody's shoe. And then my, the curiosity got the best of me. I went down there to the beach and I, and I shook the shoe and sure enough, there was tokens in there. And I yeah. said, Ben, what the hell is that all about? Later on to find out that they were pooling the tokens together to buy that disadvantage that ultimately went to Ben. That got Nick voted out. You know, yeah, that's, that's what happened. So it was that Ben realized that okay, that the disadvantage must have been played by me, and because you guys caught uh, Michelle giving tokens to Nick, that's why Nick got voted out there. Yes, yes, it was easy. It was easy to get Nick out at that point when we saw he was doing sneaky stuff. Yeah, you know, and what happened was now I don't know if you remember because Denise was supposed to go home. Do you remember that or no? I mean, I remember that there was some talk about Denise uh, going home. And I know that you had heard in the spy uh, nest that Denise was talking about a final three with Sarah and Ben. Yes. Yeah, I heard that. But that, I didn't take that that serious because Denise 
was checking out. As far as I was concerned, you got to talk to her because I know me, I can tell you right now, she, either she duped me or was 100%, 100% she was done. Yeah. She didn't want to, she, she, she was like, guys, you do, you vote whatever you want. Stop playing games with me. I'm not doing this cat and mouse stuff no more. After that, Jeremy, because remember she yes. went in there with yes. Kim thinking that Jeremy's going home and then they got into the liver. So when she got back to camp that night, she told us, guys, I'm done. I'm done. Mm-hmm. You don't lie to me. Just go, guys, go wherever you want. Go talk, whatever, and just vote whatever name you want. Whatever name you tell me, I'll put down, but I don't care. I'm done. That was legit. She was not trying to trick Nick because I still had conversations with Nick outside the game. Until- yes, Nick, team Nick. Nick still talks. Team Nick. He's my boy. Yes, so, Kentucky so, Nick. So we talk, and he still thinks that that was all, it was all a scam. And I'm like, Nick, that was not a scam, man. Denise was not trying to play you. She wasn't doing that to try to get you out. There was no need for that. We had the numbers. Denise, at that point in time, as she was checking out, she was done with the game. But what happened was, with all that stuff going on, with Nick being sneaky with the coins, Denise, please, you're not going anywhere. We need you just to vote with us. Let's mm-hmm. just get rid of Nick. You're not going anywhere. So that gave her a second wind. And that's when she was like, okay, guys. And that's when you see the confessionals of her talking about, okay, when I said I was done, I wasn't really done, you know. But that, that's because she got the second wind when we told her Nick is going. Yeah. But before that, prior to that, when she just didn't care, she was like, I don't care. I just don't want, I don't want, I don't want this craziness no more. I'm tired of being lied to. I'm tired of this. Stop playing the cat and mouse. I'm done. Because we were all tired, man, at that point. Emotionally drained, all of us, you know. And she was done. So I want Nick, if he's listening to this, and I want you to ask Denise if you talk to her. And it was not set up and I, unless I got played. Mm-hmm. So I'm telling Nick 100%. I told him over and over again. I said, Nick, we did not play you because he was hurt by that. Yes. He was really hurt. He was like, yeah. Tony, you guys played me. There was no reason for you to go above and beyond. And I said, you're absolutely right. There is no reason. And that's why we didn't do that. Denise was really done at that point. She didn't want to... She didn't want to scramble. She didn't care what name we threw down. She just didn't want to be bothered. So that's legit. Okay. And that's right. how and that's why Nick went home instead of Denise. Because Denise would we would have said, okay, Denise, you know, your wish is our command. We'll send you home if you're done, you know? Mm-hmm. But then with Nikki do, Nick doing the sneaky things with Michelle, you know, again, that's right. what happened. Okay. So now it's the edge of extinction. You're you you're you hate the edge of extinction. I do. Uh, oh, somebody's gonna I, come back. Yeah, let's rewind it a little bit again, too, because Nick, here's another thing that, again, oh, why is Nick stupid staying with Tony? How could he trust Tony? Again, man, I'm tapping Nick on his toes at night. He's like, he's like a mummy, snoring. I'm tapping him in the middle of the night because I know he would be a little groggy, a little disoriented. I said, come with me, come with me. And I took him down to the rocks, and I showed him my fake idol. I made it because the idols, the season was yes. shells. With, so, so I found a shell that's identical to my shell, my real idol. And I made it look exactly the same. I had my extortion uh, disadvantage uh, parchment and I wrapped that up with the fake idol. And I had that. And then I gave the real, the real, uh, you know, the real idol with the real thing to Nick. And I said, Nick, I have two of these. Here, look at this one. So, you know, I, I didn't want him to grab the fake one. I wanted him to grab the real one. So I'm like, look, look, grab it. So I, and I forced the real one in his hand. And I'm like, these are our idols, man. We'll share them together if we need them. So again, that made him trust me more. Yeah. That made him a little bit more scared to make a move on me. You know, there's yeah. a lot of things, man. Those little things that- Yeah, that's amazing. That, yeah. And, and I got him, I got him in the middle of the night. If you talk to him, ask him. He, he was like rubbing his eyes, looking at the idol. Like, like what? I'm like, yeah, that's the real deal. It's for both of us, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. If somebody oh, wakes you up in the middle of the night to see an idol, it's probably not real. Yeah. And he was happy. He was like, oh, man, Tony, thank you. I said, yeah, Nick, I, I couldn't help it, man. I wanted to tell you, you know, I couldn't sleep. I wanted to tell you. And, and he was, and then he saw it and he went right back to sleep. And I was like, yes. And then mm-hmm. I went back out, jungle, doing whatever I was doing, just pacing back and forth thinking. Yeah, that's wild. Okay, all right. So Tony has a fake idol also. Uh, we'll, yeah. all, we'll, we'll, get, we'll come back to that. All right. Oh, yeah, no, yeah because we're going to, that, yeah, that, that I know. plays a game later. Yeah. Edge of extinction. Right. Here comes yes. Natalie. Uh, and that must have been weird. I mean, you haven't played with Natalie at all uh, the whole Never game. Here Never comes better. here comes Natalie back. Uh, and uh, did, did that for you, was that anything? Or were you saying like, oh, this is a physical competitor? No, I, I, didn't, I didn't care. I didn't care who came in because the whole game, 
We were training ourselves. Whoever comes back from the edge has to go right back home. Yeah. And they, and, and on the edge, they're saying whoever gets in there needs to do this and do that and do this. Right. So see in the edge, right. Everybody in the edge is forming these real genuine bonds formed out of hardships. Yeah. When you form a bond out of a hardship, that's legit, man. There's no reason to be tricky about it or sneaky about the bonds you're forming out there. You're surviving. Us in the game, we're forming these, we're forming these bonds that we know we're going to break. We have to be sneaky in forming these bonds, mm-hmm. and we're going to break these bonds. So it's just a, a huge conflict of interest there. So if somebody, comes, if somebody makes it to the end that form real bonds, uh, listen, I'm not going to say, oh, oh uh, I'm, a, I'm a great player, and that's why I won. But imagine if I didn't do as much as I did in this game that these jurors did not know mm-hmm. of. Yeah. Imagine Natalie would have won if it was somebody else other than me that played this game, that checked off all, all – if you make a checklist of Survivor game, I checked off all those boxes. Yeah. Imagine if I fell short of one check. I could have lost to Natalie because she formed these bonds or because she was, she was a beast in, in, phys, in, in a physical challenge on the edge. Come on, man. That's horrible. Mm-hmm. So, and it has nothing to do with Natalie. Sure. Nothing to do with Natalie. Yeah. It didn't matter who it was that came into the game. We weren't down with that, especially five days in the game. Come in at merge, try to find the crack. And if there is no crack, try to create a crack. If you can't create a crack, shame on you. You're out of the game. You couldn't do it. But don't come back five days into the game and you're fully loaded with an idol. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to another big scene, right? With the idol. Yeah. You felt like, okay, I I think Natalie has an idol. And Sarah and Ben both felt like, no way, Tony. You're wrong about this. She doesn't have an idol. If she had an idol, she'd tell us. So so Natalie comes into the game. Um, There was some kind of drama. She She was pretending to be crying. And I'm looking at her, I'm like, that's just weird. Because they try to set her up. She said that they stuffed rocks in her pocket. So we can look the edge people because they hate. They came into this into the into the into our tribe saying, "Oh yeah, the edge hate me. They hate everybody from the edge. They they're saying this is a, a, a winter season that nobody from the edge should win. So they try to sabotage sabotage her by putting rocks in her pocket so we can think she has an idol. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, Yo, you know what? You're full of it. You're, you're lying. You're making this up. Yeah. So so that was you know flag number one. Flag number two. You know, we're in the middle and, you know, when you get some, when you catch somebody, it's the element of surprise, right? When you catch them off guard, they, they either fumble or, or, or they tell you the truth without wanting to. So we're just talking about making rice and everything. I said, no, you got an idol. And she's like, oh, no, no. Like she didn't know how to react to that. And I'm like, yeah. oh, man. You know, so from the one hurt going above and beyond to try to pretend that she had no idol by making us think that somebody tried to set her up to make us think she had an idol to her coming out of her face saying, no, 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 I don't have an idol like that. I was like, man, she's got, she's got something. She's got something, you know? Yeah. And even if she doesn't rob, when I play blackjack, I'm always saying that dealer, that card that's face down is a face card. I'm yeah. always playing it as if it's a face card. So when somebody comes in from the edge, I'm going to play it as if they have an idol. It's just the safest thing to do. We had the numbers to split it up. We had, and then we would have saw for sure if she had an idol or not, and we would have still been safe. So yeah. that's why I came up with that. Can you talk through, uh, there was the idea of a two, uh, two, 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 or there was an idea of, okay, why don't we just put three votes on Denise? Uh, how, how did you want to work this through at this final six? Uh, you know, I don't remember, but either way would have worked because according to Ben, Ben was like, all right, Denise is not my number one. We just need her. She's in part of our alliance, but I knew she was a lot, a lot tighter with Ben than, than Ben was leading on to, mm-hmm. to think, you know, like, and, and Ben, Ben, you know, Ben, once he likes you, man, he, he'll fall on the sword for you. He's that type of guy. And in that game, he didn't care about nothing else but just forming those real true bonds, you know, and that's what he did. So I, it, was a hard, it was a hard sell to them because they did, I don't think Ben wanted to get rid of Denise. So I was telling Sarah, Sarah, just me and you, you know, let, let Ben and Denise throw the name towards uh, Natalie because they don't think she has an idol. Me and you, let's throw a vote to Denise, you know. Yeah. And she didn't want to do it. She didn't want to do it. And I'm not going to push the issue. I'm not going to, I'm not going to chase them away from me this close to the end. You know, I can't do it. Mm-hmm. So I knew I had an idol. So I was protected that night. I did not want to use it for sure. I didn't want to use it because I wanted to guarantee myself a final four, you know? So they didn't, uh, what could I do, Rob? There was nothing I could do. There's nothing you could do. 
There's nothing I could do. I couldn't change their minds. Yeah. Um, were you surprised that uh, the tiebreak vote went all for Denise? Were you surprised that uh, we didn't see uh, Denise and Sarah get pushed into uh, fire making by uh, Natalie and Michelle? Well, here's another thing, too, with, uh, with that. Um, so I had the fake idol that Sarah knew about. So Sarah came up to me. She said, Tony, I need your fake idol. I was like, what, what are you going to do with it? She's like, I want to trick Natalie into thinking I have an idol in case I don't win immunity. I was like, okay. So I gave Sarah my fake idol. It was part, you know, the, everything was legit. It looked legit. Right. So what happened was Sarah purposely in front of Natalie, Natalie and Michelle was sitting at the shelter and Sarah was just like acting like she was looking around and Natalie and Michelle were being slick looking at her, but acting like they don't see her. And then she goes into her pants. Sarah goes into her pants, takes it out and she stuffs it, you know, enough where Natalie and Michelle can see it and she puts it in her bag. So I don't know, you know, I, we didn't talk outside the game to see if Natalie and Michelle really fell for it. But I think that that's what made Natalie and Michelle think twice about trying to vote for, for, for Sarah. And mm-hmm. I think there was actually, you know what? They did see, they, it is confirmed yeah. that Natalie and Michelle didn't know about Sarah having an idol, a real idol, because uh, Sarah and Michelle, I mean, Sarah and Natalie agreed to play their idols together at one of the tribals for some reason. Mm-hmm. I forgot. You got to talk to them about that. But yeah, so so Sarah did play that off really good with that fake idol. Yeah, but and the, they had a chance that they could have voted for Sarah on the tie break, right? That they yeah. could have, but they all voted out uh, Denise. Were you, were you worried that they were going to put their votes on Sarah and send Sarah to fire making versus Denise? Um, I don't, I don't think I was worried because I think Sarah, again, man, Sarah's social skills are amazing. Remember, Natalie sent uh, Natalie sent Sarah that yeah. advantage in the beginning yes. of the game. So when, when they reunited, they, they automatically went to gravitate to each other. But I knew Sarah was true to me. So I wasn't concerned about them talking together, but I'd seen them getting really close together, you know? So I, I thought Sarah was good with Natalie for sure. Yeah. Okay. So um, we go to the final five and you're obviously, you were right. They should have, uh, they, you know, they should have believed you that uh, Natalie had an idol. Uh, you go back to work though. Okay. Now. All right. Got to find the other idol and you stay up all night. And yeah, was, I thought you had it. I thought you're going to find the was, next idol. That was an everyday occurrence. Mm-hmm. Every day. What you seen that one night is what I did every night. My fire kit, I would start. It was amazing. Fires. It, it, man, it lights, it lit up the whole jungle. I, I don't think anybody's ever everything. done that before. And I think people will do that in whatever future seasons they do. If they do survivor seasons where people have access to shells, um, that I think people will do that all the time. I mean, I don't know because, uh, I did it 38 days. They showed one, one day because it was significant because Natalie found the idol when I couldn't find it. So, I mean, I combed everywhere. I, I mean, I looked at all night. How did you again. get that idea? Uh, me, as a matter of fact, I did it on Game Changers. Whoa. So one, one night, yeah, one night I was trying to build a fire in the jungle and, and then I hear a voice, hey, Tony, what are you doing? And I look up and it's Caleb. And I'm like, hey, Caleb, come with me, let's go. So then Caleb came with me. We went into the jungle with the fire. We, had, we, we lit fire on it and we were using it as a torch. The cameraman was falling down because he was falling in these holes in these ditches. And then he says, guys, let's get out of here. You're going you're gonna to break my ankles here. So he threw us out. He didn't let us go in there. Yeah. Because uh, uh, Game Changers, there was like big holes everywhere. I guess the birds nest in the holes or whatever. And they were like huge. It was like 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 pits, you know, and they kept yeah, falling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they told us to get out of there. So, yeah, so I did it in Game Changers with Caleb. So this time around, I just did it on my own. But, I, but again, I was, I mean, Rob, I lit up the whole jungle. The whole area was lit up like clear as day. And I would just go about looking in every tree. And again, I gritted it. I started from one part. Because, you know, it, you can't just walk the trail because the fire can only take you so much. So I would start the fire in one section and I would check everywhere. Then I would carry my little ember or whatever I had. I would start another one, check everywhere. I checked everywhere except the place where Natalie happened to find the idol. Mm-hmm. You know, and That's how it is. That's, that's, that's the breaks, man. Yeah. I needed the idol, you know? Yeah. Did you know that she had it uh, when you couldn't find it? Nope. Yeah. Nope. I, I just, I, I thought, I assumed that they probably didn't hide it again. You know? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. So, okay. So this is when Ben is going to talk to Sarah and basically say like, Hey, if you want, you know, I'm basically, you know, going to give you permission. You can vote against me at this, uh, at this round. Did you have any idea that this was going on? 
None, none whatsoever. And, and I'll tell you that that vote off, that Ben vote off was the first time in, in my survivor history that I didn't know where the votes were going. Mm-hmm. The first time, man, Can you imagine that? That was yeah. the first time that I did not know where the vote was going. First time I was totally blindsided and I had no idea what that feels like. Cause I'm always, I always know where the votes are going unless somebody's playing the idol like they did for Sandra. That's a mm-hmm. different story, but yeah. I knew going into that tribal that all the votes were going to Denise. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm, I always knew where the votes were going except for this Ben boat. That was the first time I got caught off guard and I had no idea where that came from because I came up with this crazy idea with Sarah for hours. Hey, Sarah, you got to tell Natalie this and tell Michelle this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to tell Ben this and you tell this, that. And then we kept going back and forth for like hours. She was like, so Tony, this is what you want me to say. You sure this is how you want it? Yes, Sarah, that's how you do it. That's how we're going to do it. And then she totally blindsided me, man. So I really thought it was working. Because I think, I think, isn't that the spinest when I saw that Natalie had the idol? Um, you know what? Uh, I don't recall. I think that's the one where, where, where she showed. Uh, oh, yeah. The, I, think, yeah I think it's Natalie and, and Sarah. We're talking okay. about the well. Yeah. Yes. So that's, I did find out that Natalie had the idol. And that's when I came up with this crazy thing because we were scared that Natalie's going to play the idol for Michelle. Yeah. Okay. And that's, and that's when I came up with this idea. Let's make Natalie think that it's going on Michelle. And then the last minute, let's scare Natalie into thinking it's her. You know, like I came up with some craziness. And then when I see Natalie play the idol for herself, I was tapping Ben. I was like, yes, Ben. I'm giving him pounds and everything. And then, and then he goes home and, he's, and he knew he was going home. And I was like, what? I, yeah. That was crazy, man. Were you mad at all that Sarah had kept that from you? So, so when we back, when we got back to the, to the camp after that tribal, Sarah says, Tony, can I talk to you? Leave me alone. Don't you talk to me. I don't want to hear nothing from any of you ladies. You girls can kiss my cheek because we're final four, baby. And, yeah. we're like, and they were like, and they were all yeah. scared. They thought, I, they thought I was really mad. Yeah. And they were like, oh my God. And Sarah says, you're not mad at me? I said, I don't, when did you ever see me mad, Sarah? You ever see me mad in this game? I don't mm-hmm. get mad at this game. Good for you, man. You got him out good. We're final four. And we all group hugged and everything it was great, man. It was so funny because they were scared. I was, don't you talk to me. None of you talk to me. I was screaming, man. Yeah. I thought it was going to make me yeah, because that was funny, man. The way they were looking at me, they were scared. And mm-hmm. then I was like, kiss my cheek. We're mm-hmm. final four. It was great, man. So, Tony, you get to the final four and it's going to be this, uh, okay, you have to catch the ball. It goes through the, the cage. Through uh, the maze. Uh, Did you feel like that that was something that you were, you were going to be good at? I thought I was going to be good, but I screwed up by going down eye level with it. You know, again, you don't know until you try something. So I What's thought my the strategy trick? was to be, yeah. So I thought I was going to be level with it and catch the ball, put it up, catch the ball, put it up. But it's better to look at it from the top down. And you don't even have to look at it because the, the whole thing is left, right, left, right, left, right. Left. It's always going to go to the left and then it's always going to go to the right. You know, and un- unless you can subconsciously keep telling yourself that, you're not going to think about that. You're just going to be looking at the ball. And that's where I messed up. Yeah. Steven says the trick is you have to count how many seconds it takes for the ball to oh, go no, through. No. no, 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 no. There's no seconds there. Those balls just go, some balls get caught up. And then they, if you throw them in quicker, because you remember you're throwing multiple mm-hmm. balls. So there's no seconds. You just remember, if this one comes out to the left, go to the right, go to the left, go to the right. Just wait for it. Just wait for it. As soon as you catch one, go to the next one and wait for it. Go to the yeah. next one and wait for it. Left, right. That's all you have to, you have to keep telling yourself, left, right, left, right. And once you stop telling yourself left, right, it's over. And okay. that's what happened to me. So you lose the challenge. Natalie's going to win. And then did you feel like, okay, um, I am going to uh, be going into the fire no matter what? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And what was your best case scenario for who did you want to, f- to uh, face in, in the fire? Was it Sarah? I did not want to face Sarah. I wanted to sit at the end with Sarah. That was our dream from day, day six on Kagayan. You mm-hmm. know, cops arrested and at the finals. I really, you know, I wasn't thinking if she can beat me. I wasn't thinking if I could beat her. When I go, when I play Survivor, anytime, like I, t- I tell people, I never go into the game thinking of a resume. Never. I yeah. never think of, I got to make a move to build my, I never. I go in there and I play as hard as I can and I make the decisions that can propel me to the next stage. I never think about resumes. So I'm not, I'm just thinking if my best is not good enough to be Sarah, then it's not good enough to be Sarah. 
But again, I don't want to go with somebody that I know played a better game than me. Like I, I wouldn't want to go with somebody that's more likable than me, like Jeremy. I wouldn't want to mm-hmm. go with somebody like Sophie. I wouldn't want to go with certain people. But with Sarah, I wasn't thinking if she can beat me or not. I just wanted to be at the end with her, you know? Mm-hmm. And so that's what my thing was from day one. I wanted to be at the I wanted to be at the end with Sarah, with Sarah and Sandra. Sandra would have smoked both of us out. If Sandra made it to the end again, she gets all 16 votes. Yeah. And there's no question about it. But I wasn't thinking like that. I just wanted to get to the end with her because of outside relationships. Mm-hmm. But Tony, I feel like that you that you do every single thing in your power to help get you to the point where you can win. It just seems like that that seems like a disconnect. That seems different than everything else that you're doing to go to the end with people that could beat you. And that's because of outside. Yeah. And that's, you know, like with the Sierra and her mom, you know how Jeff yes. made a big deal. And they're like, why is that? A, it is a big deal. Because when you care for somebody and you know somebody outside the game in real life, it's super hard to turn your back on them. It's, I, I know I, I can't do it, man. I can't mm. do it. I wouldn't be able to say, Rob, me and you in real life and say, when we play together, I got your back 100% and then go out there and burn you. I just couldn't do that. That's why I don't talk to anybody outside the game because if I ever play with them, I don't want that. I don't want that looming in the back of my mind like it was with Sarah and Sandra. So they, mm-hmm. they could have crushed me at the end and I, I just wouldn't be able to do it. Mm-hmm. I, I just wouldn't. In in uh, in uh, Kagayan, when I don't know you, I don't care. I'm coming out. I'm coming out to get rid of all of you. I don't care about you. But yeah. once I know you outside the game, it's hard. It's really hard. We talked today after the season. You talked about how you actually are not very good at making the fire, even though you make them every night when you are looking yeah. for uh, the idols. You are very yeah. concerned. Yeah, that's a you know when I make the we make a fire. When we go to Survivor, the first day you make the fire, whatever you use, bamboo. Once you make that fire, you tend to it for 39 days. You keep feeding it and feeding it. You never have to start it again. When I went out into my midnight excursions, I would take the ember out of there and start the uh, fire with the ember. I would never have, yeah, I would never have to chop any flint like a or anything fire. like that. Got it. So, yeah, so it was already fire and just throw stuff on it and it ignites. So with, this, uh, with the flint, that was the first time where we got to actually sit there and practice. And now what happened was... You know, I'm, I'm trying to, I can't do it, man. It's like, you know, I can do it under whatever normal conditions and I have all day to try to start a fire for the camp. But knowing I have to try to make fire quick because I got to get better at it, it, it was tough. And now what happened was, I would, me and Sarah went away in the corner because I was thinking all along, Natalie's going to make fire with me. I didn't think Sarah was going to make fire with me. And here's Sarah watching me how bad I suck at it and I'm letting her see how bad I suck at it. And maybe that's why Sarah's like, yo, I got this guy, you know? Yeah. So I'm telling Sarah, you know, Natalie's going to kill me because she's good. I got to learn how to do it. So every time Natalie would come just to say, hey, how you guys doing? I would like deliberately like put out the little, I didn't even have fire, whatever. And I'm, I'm like, oh, nah, man, I fucking suck at this. I'm real bad at this. You know, I really suck at making fire. She's like, yeah, I just saw you throw it all down. I said, I didn't throw nothing down. So mm-hmm. I wanted her to think that I was really good at fire, but I wanted to pretend that I'm trying to trick her. Yeah. Which it was reverse psychology because I was tricking her, but in the other way. And I kept doing it. Every time she came, I walked to Michelle and I'm like, hey, Michelle, how you doing? And Michelle was like, bang, bang, sparking up fires. And I'm like, ah, that, that, don't be stressed out. That's OK, Michelle. You know, it, you know, two seconds. It's, it's not fast, but it's OK. Mm-hmm. What? I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I would run back to Cyrus. And, Sarah, Michelle's making the fire so fast, man. We're in trouble, you know, if we have yeah. to go up against it. So it was like, again, all psychological, man. Everything was just like trying to, I just try to trick them psychologically the whole time from day one to day 39. It was crazy. Yeah. So crazy. ultimately you're going to go into the fire making, you're going to take on Sarah, you win the fire mate. It's, it's neck and neck. It goes back and forth. And it was, I, I thought just such a uh, beautiful scene in the show when you and Sarah and you're crying and oh. Sarah is leaving. And uh, I just, there's very few scenes, I think, in the 20 year history of the show that I think that are as powerful and uh, I- I- impactful as the, the moment that you guys have there. That's not like, you know, loved ones or anything like that. These are two people who are players and she's leaving and you're going to go on to the end. And uh, it's just a, a really great earned emotional scene in the show. I was heartbroken, man. And right before we got to that fire, I was still bluffing Natalie because I really thought Natalie was going to step down. So, so Natalie was like, yeah, I was thinking about going up against fire with Tony. And then I jumped. So why don't you? 
So why don't you go? For, you know, like what's stopping you? Mm-hmm. I was just doing it to pretend I wanted her to go step down with right. so I could get her out of the game. But she would have killed me in fire. She would have, because in the edge, Boston Rob was telling everybody, listen, if we go back into the game at five, we need to learn how to make fire. We need to practice. So that's all they did over there was practice. And we knew that in the game. We were like, yo, these people are going to kill us at fire if they get that far. That's why yeah. the second they come in, they got to go. We didn't know she was going to be protected all the way through to fire making, you know? So that's why I bluffed there too. Thank goodness it worked, man. I don't know if it worked, the bluff worked or not, but thank goodness she didn't step down and make fire with me. But then when Sarah was going to make fire with me, oh man, Rob, I was, I, I, that, that hurt so much, you know? And yeah. Then, and then Sarah was like, well, if anybody's going to take me out, I want it to be this guy. I'm like, oh my God, I, I couldn't talk like that. Mm-hmm. Like I couldn't say if I, if anybody's going to take me out, I want it to be Sarah. I don't want nobody to take me out. I can't think like that, you know? So yeah. That's just, that's, man. But I, 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 oh man, I was hurt bad, man. I yeah. was hurt real bad. Uh, Sarah ends up leaving. You go to the final three. Or have you start crunching the numbers in your head for, okay, this is this vote, this vote, I got this vote, this vote? Nope. I don't, I don't do that, Rob, man. What, what I don't do is also what I, in the game when I play, I don't think about the money. I don't think about $2 million. $2 what do you million. think about? I don't think about that. I just think about playing a good game to get to the end. Mm-hmm. I don't think about $2 million because what happens is people that do think about that $2 million, it restricts them from making moves and taking risks because that's a lot of money to lose. You so I'm not going to take this, I'm not going to take this big risk thinking I'm going to lose this big $2 million prize if I blow this risk. So that's why I never think of that money. I don't think about it at all. And there was one point where, you know, I even told Nick, I said, Nick, Stop thinking about the money, man. Don't think about the money. Cause like, yo, $2 million is a lot of money. Tone, we got to try to make, you know, I was like, don't think about the money. Cause that's how I am. If you think I'm telling you, if I thought about that money every day, I would never make the moves that I was making. No way. I would be quiet. Like a little mouse. I'd be like, okay, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mm-hmm. mean to do that. Cause yeah. that's what happens. Even in, in poker, scared money don't make money. Right. When I go to the casinos, I don't think about how much $2,000 really is. When it's somebody, even on a bluff, I'm all in $6,000. I don't mm-hmm. care if it's a bluff. I'm not thinking about how much money it really is until I lose it. When I lose it, that's when I'm crying. But that's enough. When people think $6,000, I'm not. I made people full, full, full houses when I had nothing, not even a pair, because of the me not thinking about the money and pushing a lot of money in. And that so, wasn't just when you were playing against JT with Malcolm? No, get out. I smoked them. I smoked both of them. I, I crushed Malcolm in, in, in chess. I crushed them in poker. I was crushing all of them in poker, man. Are you a, g- a good chess player? Chess? I, I'm, I, I don't think I could beat the young lad. I think me and the young lad did play. I think there was one stalemate. But I'm, stalemate? I, I can, wow. I, I, I can hold my own in chess. I can hold, I, I'm not a speed chess guy. I, I, I got to look. Yeah. But, wow. but I, I can hold my own in chess for sure. But yeah, okay. so that's the thing. I don't think about that money because if I did, I would never make, I would never make those moves. You know, I wouldn't take the risk of losing that much money. You go to the final three. I, I thought you did a really great job in the final three. A- any, and in, you know, f- uh, full disclosure in Kagiyan, I, I thought you were, you were okay uh, in the, in the final jury questioning, but I thought you did a really great job here in this season. I, I disagree, Rob, man. I thought I did a, sh- a horrible job with the final. Yeah. Because, and, and that's again, my intentions to go in there. I, I, what am I going to tell you? You know, what am I going to tell you? I'm better than you. I blindsided you. I, I pulled the wool over your eyes. You suck. You stink. I beat you. I, what am I going to tell you? So, you know, like, so I go, even in Kageyen, I would go with my tail between my legs. Yeah. I would be quiet. I, I, I'm a person that I respect authority. You know what I mean? At that point in the game, you have the power. I don't have power. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Yeah. I don't want to say anything wrong because I'm not a good talker. So if I start talking and I, and I turn somebody off, that could just ruin everything for me. So I wanted my game to speak for itself. And, you know, for the most part, it did speak for itself because I really, you know. Yeah. Uh, I thought you kept it light. Uh, I thought you could have like, I I thought you really could have like been, like come across like too strong in that final uh, three against Michelle and against Natalie. And I thought that could have come off like a kind of a jerk in that final three. And, And you totally read the room. I mean, at least on television where the jury was laughing, you had them uh, cracking up like, Oh, did did you guys even know about this? Uh, I I thought that that was really the perfect way to 
approach this jury of all winners. Yeah, but Rob, like, like now in hindsight, I'm looking at it, I could have sat up there and say, hey, listen, guys, this is what I did. I came into the game on day one with a huge threat. My main objective was to diminish my threat. I said in my confessional, I want everybody's guards to go down. You know, I did that. I found idols. I won immunities. I blindsided Sophie, which, which turned the whole game around. You know, I, I beat the siren in fire. I, did, I could have went on a checklist of everything I did in Survivor, you know, but I didn't want to do that. I was scared to do that because I didn't want to look like I'm bragging. Right. So I didn't know, I didn't know where, to, where to go, you know? So, yeah, I guess, like you said, you, I guess you can appreciate the way I, I approached it because you know what it's like. But me, I, I wish I well, could. I don't know what it's like to be in day 39, Tony. But <laughs> I've watched a lot of them. I've watched 40 of these. <laughs> but yeah, man. So, so like me, I wish, I wish I could have been open and tell everybody I did this, I did that. What else would you expect from me? There's nothing more I could have done. There's nothing more anybody could do in a game of survivor. I, 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 I checked up all the boxes, but I couldn't, I was scared to do that. I was scared to talk like that. Mm-hmm. So when they asked me a question about something, I didn't even answer the question. I would just talk about something else to try to make them laugh, you know, yeah. which if I would have lost a game, if I would have lost and I wouldn't have got their votes, I would have been kicking myself for the rest of my life that I didn't talk mm-hmm. to them how I should have, you know, like Natalie, yeah. when she won her season, you seen how aggressive Natalie was. I did this to this one. I did this to this one. I played you out. I, you know, and yeah. I could, Michelle killed that tribal council. Mm-hmm. Killed it. She was on point. She was talking like, like I've never seen somebody talk and she was like fluid out of her mouth. Like yeah. awesome. And I was like, wow, man, you know, but I didn't want to drag nobody through the mud. I didn't want to say nothing bad about Michelle. I didn't want to say nothing about, bad about Natalie because Natalie was an edger. So I was mm-hmm. stuck. What am I going to say? I can't, I can't bad mouth the edge because yeah. all you people are on the edge. Now, now, you know, is it my fault that I didn't get to play with Ethan? I didn't get to play with poverty. I didn't get to play with Boston Rob. I didn't get to play with Danny. Is that any fault of my own? Mm-hmm. Like how am I supposed to expect to get their votes when I didn't even meet the people? Like mm-hmm. Ethan said, Ethan, Ethan came up yeah, to I me. I think and you did like, get Danny's vote. I did. Yeah, I did. No, I did get Danny's vote, but someone like, I did get Rob's vote too. But yeah. someone like Ethan came up to me at the end. He was like, dude, you know, I heard a lot that you did. Unfortunately, I didn't even get to talk to you. I didn't get to see, you know, social game. I didn't, you know, we didn't even interact. So I couldn't really vote for you. Because some of the guys, they came to me and gave me that respect. You know, just some, some people like Wendell, they were like, Tone, you killed the game, this and that. And, and you know, Wendell called you the, the GOAT. Yeah. <laughs> He's too loose with that, man. Mm-hmm. Wendell's awesome, though, man. He gives me a lot of respect. He gives me a lot. You know, he, he really speaks highly of my game. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Rob, again, you know, do I think I'm the greatest? I don't think I'm the greatest. I think I'm a good player. I think I'm a really good player, as are everybody else that won the game. In their mm-hmm. season, they were the greatest in their season, you know? So yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not, and when people call me King Tony, and oh man, I don't like that. Don't call me King, because mm-hmm. it's not. But it was, it was definitely a great season. I think I did everything that I could do in a season. I don't think there's nothing more I could have done from the social to the strategic to the, to the, to the physical game. I won four challenges, man. Yeah. You know? Tony, was, uh, after they have that uh, final tribal council, they take you to the Ponderosa. We never get to see what goes on at the Ponderosa once the final three gets back. That uh, what what you eat when you got back? Um, deep fried ice cream. Deep fried ice cream is that something you had a craving for? Or they just no. had that. Everybody was just saying tone. They recommended it. They were like, "You yeah. got to eat this," you know. And I and I ate it. It was delicious. And then I had a uh, lobster tail with steak, mm. like a yeah. plate of that. Yeah. So it was good. But again, everybody, man, it was so much love. You know when. When, when, when I went to the Pond de Rosa, everybody, we were just all, just all just nice, man. Just beautiful, man. Yeah. A different atmosphere than Kagiyan? No, same, same. I, when the game is over, man, everybody, yeah. you know, in Kagiyan, me and Cass, Cass, Cass was like, I bet you didn't know I was a lawyer. I was like, uh, no, I didn't know you were a lawyer. And, and I said, uh, and I was in, I told her I was in real estate. She's like, I knew you were in real estate. You know, we, we were just, all of us were yeah. just happy. You know, I mean, I don't know if it was fake happiness, but everybody was just happy, man. It's You're just great. happy. It's over. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome, man. I mean, it, you know, again, I wasn't thinking about who voted for me or who didn't vote for me. Yeah. Just, it was just nice. Eventually, you have to start thinking about uh, what votes did you get. Did you think you had it? Did you think that you, you were the winner? You know, I had, I had Jeremy come up to me and he told me he's he, sorry he couldn't vote for me. And I had Ethan come up to me and he told me he's sorry. And then I had a, I knew Sarah voted for me. I knew yeah. So again, like, like, I, again, I don't like to set myself up for failure, so I don't try to think about it. And then yeah. when I'm on social media, I started social media up again. 
I'm seeing, you know, I'm seeing the people that want the jurors and the jurors, the jurors talking to Michelle, you know, having fun. And I'm like, oh my God, they voted for Michelle. And then I see them, you know, hanging out with Natalie. I'm like, oh my God, they voted for Natalie. Cause you know, I don't really interact with them that much, you know? So, yeah. you know, it was like, it was just, I just didn't want to think about it. All I was saying to myself, I know I have enough to put a pool in my house, you know, no matter mm-hmm. what happens, you know, no matter what so, happens. So, you know, again, it was honestly from, you know, again, had nothing to do with me thinking I'm the best, but I really don't think that the person from the edge should have got votes. Yeah. And I say the person from the edge, I'm not saying Natalie. I don't right. think the person from the edge should have got the votes. It's, it's In just, your pregame, you talked about how much you hate the edge of extinction. I mean, a lot, I think all of us did, you know, even Jeremy talked about it. He's like, uh, you know, he said, he says, I, I, I don't think that anybody can vote for somebody that comes from the edge, you know, yeah. but it happens to be somebody that, you know, he cares about, you know, mm-hmm. it's just, uh, the edge is tough, man. It's, 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 as a player, again, as a player, you want that second chance. But again, do you think you have a chance of winning when you get to the end? Do you think, you know, the Chris Underwood, yeah, he won. He took a big risk. He, he took off his necklace. You know, maybe if Natalie takes off her necklace and takes a big risk, but is that enough that you only played for five days? Mm-hmm. You, you know, you played five days. Okay, we played for 39 days. We played for 39 days. How yeah. are you going to come in and play a good game for five days and think you should, that's enough to win? Why would you think... That playing a survivor for five days is enough for you to win. Why? <laughs> Not Natalie, anybody. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you Jeff told me in the preseason, I saw him for the premiere, and he said that they're not going to bring back the edge for a while. I mean, they shouldn't. Yeah. Right? They shouldn't. Because, again, how, how can you think that you, you should win the whole game because you played a good game for five days? Yeah. And, and we're giving you tokens to buy immunity. And we're giving you Wendell. Wendell would have probably won that. You see how close Wendell was to get the balls in to come back? If Natalie didn't have 25 advantages, Wendell would have probably came in. And who yeah. knows what would have happened at that yeah. point, you know? Yeah. But, but the whole thing is, it's like, you know, we're giving you tokens to help you get back into the game to kill us. We're giving you tokens to help you get an idol to come back into the game to hurt us. We, we've been struck, you know, Michelle, I'm, I'm hurt. I mean, that's why I'm supporting Michelle because mm-hmm. I'm hurt that she didn't get any votes, you know, over the edger. I'm not going to say Natalie. I'm going to say the edger, you know? Yes. I'm disappointed because Michelle was good enough to last 39 days in the game. She was dodging, weaving, and dodging. Yes, we left her out of a lot of votes because we were scared of what she was capable of doing if we gave her that information because she's a good player. Yeah. If she wasn't a good player, we would say, come on with us, vote with us. We need you as a number because you need numbers. But we don't want to take the chance with Michelle as a number because we knew she could blow up our spot. So, you know, I, it's, I, I don't know. It's either, I felt that you should either give me all your votes or split them with me and Michelle, not with mm-hmm. the person from the edge. That's how, that's how I felt. Tony, were your kids old enough to appreciate watching you on TV this time around? Um, o- only the challenges. They love the challenges. Yeah. They, they, they like me. When I read a book, I just want to look at the illustrations. I don't care what the words say. I yeah. look at the illustrations and I flip the pages. So, you know, that's, that's genetics. Yeah. Well, you're a big hit at my house that my kids, oh, uh, they talk about spy bunkers, uh, <laughs> spy, uh, spy shacks. Uh, so that, uh, just yes, this, about the nest up in the trees. Why well, I don't let them climb up in a tree. Tony, yeah. But, uh, that, so there, that, that, that all was a big hit. Um, although my wife says that you, she says that you don't want to, you don't talk to her anymore. Ooh, Nicole. Yeah. How, she, says, you, she says, Tony used to be my friend. He doesn't talk to me anymore. No, no, I'm still her friend. I think we share the same birthday, man. September yeah. 10th. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was yeah, what she said. Of course, uh, you know, we have, you know, we're good. Me and Nicole are good. So yeah. I remember in Kagayan, we started off on the wrong foot. She called me a Jamal. Was it Jamal? Who was it? <laughs> Jam- Jamok? No, who's the guy that got sand in his eye? Oh, Shamar? Shamar. Yeah, yes. she called me Shamar. Oh, she said, she said, oh, this guy, you know, he's going to, he's going to say that he got sand in his eye. He's big, and he's <laughs> very specific. Food. And she doesn't know yeah, what she's talking about, Tony. This is no, I, know, I remember that. And, yeah. and I remember I was, I was on, I was like texting her saying, what are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, Tony, you, you, you know what my, my dream is one day that I know you say you don't do fine dining. Uh, that I, I, one day, uh, I, I wish we could go to dinner, Tony. Yeah, we can. Maybe like Burger King or something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, I don't, I'm telling you, I'll go to restaurants. Like, you know, sometimes I'll go out to these nice restaurants and I'll order a chicken sandwich. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. 
I don't, like I said, man, I don't know about going out. I don't know about traveling. I don't know about sports. I don't know mm-hmm. about TV shows. I don't know about music. Nothing. Man. Yeah. You know? Can I ask, can I ask you uh, w- w- one other question about uh, that? Can you just talk a, l- a little bit about your, like, uh, growing up that were, were your parents immigrants uh, to this country? Uh, or yeah, they, 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 they came here and then, uh, and you were born here, right? Yes. They both came from Greece. You know, yes. we lived in a little apartments all our lives. We lived in little apartments. You know, I was born and raised in Jersey city, you know, and one, one, my dad, was the only worker, you know, he was the only employee. My mom was a housewife. And, you know, we, we grew up with nothing, man. We didn't, we didn't have the luxury of what these kids have today. Yeah. You know? I had Candyland, you know, that board game Candyland. Yes. Yes. We, we had, a, it was a hand-me-down from a friend or something. And me and my sister, we ripped it in half and that was our skateboard. We used to skateboard around with half of the Candyland around the whole house and skate on it. You know, that roller skates, it would right. another hand-me-down. <laughs> my sister would have one. I would have one. And we would just skate around the whole block with one roller skate, you know? So we didn't, we didn't, we never went on vacation. Yeah. We never traveled. We never ate anything more than just what my mom cooked at home. Yeah. So, you know, that. And I only bring that up because I feel like that. I think uh, that you are just such a hardworking person and we see, uh, you know, uh, that you're so focused on your, on your family life and on, uh, you know, all that, all the hard work that you put into the game. And I think that that's, uh, a lot of the, the children of immigrants, uh, the first generation, uh, in, in this country, uh, I feel like that that's a common trait that they just are very, you know, uh, hardworking people with, you know, uh, a, a ton of energy. They're very, dedicated to what they do and, and and that's a fact because you know when they come here you come with nothing yeah you know nobody you know nothing you have nothing so yeah. you have to work just like survivor you know you, you know, a lot of people say oh i i i, I play with the hand the hand that was dealt to me no you have to make your own hand you don't have to play with what's dealt to you kaga yen was a perfect example i was on the bottom me and trish were on the bottom so that was the hand i was dealt but i made my own hand by going to sarah and saying sarah i heard cliff talking to Lindsay about trying to get you out. So I created my own hand and I went from the bottom to the top. Yep. Right? That's, so you, 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 don't, you don't just play with the cards that you're dealt. You have to make your own hand, you know? And the same thing, you're not given an alliance. You're not given the power when you first start the game. You have to create your own alliances. You have to create your own power. You have to work towards that. Same thing in life. Nobody's just going to give you a house. Nobody's going to give you a car. Nobody's going to give you a, a, a job. You got to go out and get it. You got to go out and get it. You got to go work for it. So that, I mean, nobody would, nobody was giving us, you know, games and taking us out and buying us boats. So that's what I do now. I work for it. You know, yeah. even a survivor, I work for it. everything I have. I have my pool, I have my boats, I have my cars, I have my properties, I have my houses, you know, survivor gave me some of that, but a lot of it was from my own hard work, you know? Mm-hmm. So, you know. Yeah. Well, Tony, this is such a pleasure to talk to you. I, I feel like that one of these days, that you're just going to be gone again from the social media and uh, it's coming. So, I know it's coming. I know it's, I know what's going to happen. That's why I'm so, it, yeah. it may, it, it's so sad. And I, I'll just be glad that, that this, that this all happened, but uh, it doesn't mean I'm not going to be sad when you're going to be, I'll still be here, but you're, you're going to yeah, be gone, Tony. No, I mean, listen, man, I, I'm me. I'm not, I'm not an actor. I'm not, I'm not some famous celebrity, you know, like, so these people that, that these fans that love me, man, and they give me all that love, it's, it's like really, you, it's, it's heartfelt, man. You know, like when I, when I tweet something and say, you know, thanks to my fans and like thousands of people respond, oh my God, King Tony, you're the best. It's, it's, it's amazing, man. That people really, really like take this serious, you know? And, and I love that, but it's not, it's not my life. That's not my lifestyle. You know, I, that's not, that's not what I'm into. You know, I, I just don't. Yeah, Even I get it. You know, I understand. Some people felt so bad for me. They were like, oh, we feel so bad that you didn't get to have that grand finale, you know, at, at a live audience. And I was so happy. I was so happy that <laughs> we didn't have that live. Because I, I was home. I didn't have to fly nowhere. I didn't have to be, I didn't have to party with nobody. You what know, about Baby Cakes? Crazy. She didn't even get to go to the last finale. I, I know, man. Ba- baby Cakes misses out on all this stuff. But you yeah. know what? It was good, man. To be home, to be home in my own sofa, you know, in my pajamas, giving interviews. Oh, it's great, man. It's, <laughs> yeah. I, I love that, man. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I feel bad that the fans didn't get to, you know, yeah. interact with me, you know. But, but me, I, 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 I was happy, yeah. you know. 
Well, Tony, you brought a lot of happiness to people uh, all through the spring while so many people were locked in their homes uh, with dealing with everything with coronavirus and they couldn't go anywhere. And Wednesday night was their one night of the week that they felt like that the normal stuff was going on, that uh, you brought a lot of smiles to people's faces uh, this spring. That's awesome. That's, that's great, man, Rob. And unlike my Kaga Yan season, this time around, people really love my game because, uh, you know, like my first season, I was breaking promises. I was hurting people. This time I was just playing a nice, quiet, smooth game, man. I was, I was, I was happy with myself, my performance this time around. Yeah. Well, Tony, I really appreciate it. I know that you love to spend time with your family. I really appreciate you taking time out to uh, spend time with me and uh, tell your story and uh, be so, uh, so giving with this interview. So uh, thank you so much, Tony. You got it, Rob, man. And, and Tony Vla at, for a limited time to at Tony Vlacho seventy three right uh, that's the that's the new Twitter uh, Twitter handle is it I don't even know I those I thought am I wrong I don't know okay and then also just uh, I want to give out the link for the shirt again uh, one one more time right uh, where do you go for the shirt Tony do you, do you know I believe, I, I believe it's can you print you know what as a matter of fact this weekend. This weekend, I'm probably going to go by the, the, the print shop and I'll probably sign some more shirts just to do a nice, big, mass blowout again, you know? I'll just yes. sign it myself because I don't want to try to coordinate it with Natalie and Michelle because it's just too much to coordinate it. But I'll, 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 I'm going to go down and I'll sign off. So I don't know when you can Can you this. print? Uh, right. Uh, and let, let's think, Tony, what happened with your torch? Oh, I, yeah. I, 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 which one? The Winners at War? Yeah. You were trying to buy uh, the, the your torch it. and you lost the auction? I lost the auction. I was I was I, I paid attention to the auction when it first came out. And then we went we went to you know, we went away for the weekend to the lake. And I didn't I lost track of when the auction yeah. ended. And when I came back, it was gone. So I went so from Cagayan, I have my torch, I have my urn, I have my bag of tricks, and I have my tribe flag. So this time around I wanted to get the urn. I wanted to get, you know, I wanted to have a little yeah. collection, you know. The set. And I lost it. But uh but People out there are helping me. They're doing investigative skills. They're using their investigative yeah. skills. And they already tracked down. Uh, they tracked down the flag. Yeah. Who Adam, bought your torch? Adam, Adam Klein? Adam Klein tracked down where the flag is. Oh, We're okay. still in the process of, of tracking down the torch. Okay. All right. Well, Tony, uh, thank you again uh, so much. And uh, really appreciate it. This was such a thrill. Thanks, man, Rob. And tell Nicole I said hello. <laughs> I will. All right.